Okay, so I think we have a good number. We are about 26% here. So I think we could start now. So good evening, everybody. Good evening. I want to say good evening to every one of us here on this call. I hope we're all good. I hope we had an amazing day. So I would love to hear our voices. How are we doing? Just unmute and just say how you are. I just want to hear our voices. How are we doing? Hi, I'm just say I'm good. Hi. Hi, hi, hi. you're welcome. You're welcome. Hi, you're welcome. everyone. Welcome to hear our voices. Yeah. Hi, good, evening. Good, evening, good evening. Good evening, Amaka. Good evening, Amaka. I'm excited. Good evening. Amaka. Hello, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, good evening Amaka. Good to hear from good you. Again. Voices. Come on, bring it on. Bring it on. I want to hear our voices. This is good evening. Good evening, Black. Good evening, everybody. Bye. Bye. Yeah, hi, everyone. hi, Mama. <laughs> good evening, good evening, good evening. Okay, so I'm so excited that we are fine. I'm so excited that we, we are all good. And we all had an amazing day. So my name is Chama Kagulu Jonathan, and I'm going to be your host for today. And I want to say a very big welcome to and everyone of here in this meeting this evening. And I'm really excited to host you all. And I'm excited that we are here in this training this evening. So this evening, we're going to be guiding applicants of the Young African Leaders Initiative Regional Leadership Center West Africa Emerging Leaders Program. So my colleagues and I are here this evening to guide us on how to you know, apply so successfully for this particular fellowship. And we have a lot, like I, I mean a whole lot. We have a lot in stock for us this evening. And I would allow us, I want us to you know, stay pure this evening because we have a lot in stock for us. So please, if, if you're... If your Mama. mic is unmuted, please can you mute yourself? Hmm? Can we hear me? Can we hear yes, you? we can hear you. We can hear you. Okay, I can fine. hear you, but I'm not going to I'm not going to unmute myself. <laughs> I'm not going to unmute myself. It's okay. Yes, okay. <laughs> yes continue. <laughs> It's okay. Yes. Bolu, mm -hmm. Bolu, you're not the one speaking. <laughs> the most of us are It's not the just Bolu. We are all vegans. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we are all vegans. Thank you. I can't see 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 you. Uh, Bolu Mike is muted. I know the father. Amaka. I know the father. Hello. Can you hear me? I left and I'm back. Can you hear me? Yes, Amaka. Because you're using a premium uh, version, you can mute everybody. You can mute everybody. Just check your setting. Okay. Yes, so Amaka, you can unmute yourself. Thank you so much. Thank you. Please, please confirm if it's been recorded. Please make me the host once again and confirm if it's been recorded, please, from your end. No, I'll make you co-host now. Yes, it is. Is it, is it been recorded? Yes, please. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Grace. Okay, so tonight's training is brought to you. I think it's a network. So tonight's training is brought to you by the Directorate of Programs. Nigerian Prize 
Nigerian Prize for Leadership Ambassadors 002. So most of us here might be wondering what Nigerian Prize for Leadership program is all about. So Nigerian Prize for Leadership is an initiative of the Leadership Advancement Foundation LEAF, which was instituted in 2019 and is being governor, governed by you know, prominent men and women in our country today. And the vision of the Nigerian Prize for Leadership is to, is to inspire uh, individuals, to inspire Nigerians to lead a life larger than themselves for their community, their nation, and for humanity in general. The objectives of Nigerian Prize for Leadership include establishing a new culture that promotes excellence in leadership in Nigeria and arrest the Gorgeous slide of leadership standard and outcome in the nations. And in Nigerian Press for Leadership, we have amazing men and women who are part of the governing board. We know um, the, the likes of Professor Anya O Anya, Professor Jerry Ghana, Dr. Ike Neliako, Lady Onyeka Owenu, and so many other great men and women. Now, talking about the Nigerian Press for Leadership program, um, the Nigerian Press for Leadership organizes uh, a program, a fellowship every year where leaders across Nigeria apply for this program and where you're selected, they're all converged for a one month leadership program where they are being trained by industry experts. Now, after this training, these individuals who underwent this training are now referred to as ambassadors. And in, in, in the Nigerian Press for Leadership, after, your, after the training, you are called ambassador, just like I stated earlier. And at this juncture, I know that I have my fellow ambassadors here in this house. And I at this moment, I would like to recognize my fellow ambassadors of the Nigerian Prize for Leadership program. I know they are here this evening. Ambassadors, so I would like to recognize you guys. If you're here, I would like you to respond. Ambassadors. <laughs> ambassadors. Changing the narrative. Ambassadors. <laughs> Changing the narrative. You're welcome, Ruth. You're welcome, Ruth. You're welcome, Prince. You're welcome, everybody here in the house. So in, tonight, in, tonight's in tonight's training, we're going to be guiding applicants in the ongoing Yali RLC West Africa Emerging Leaders Program this evening. And I'm so happy that we are all here this evening because, you know, if you're, if you're a Yali RLC fellow, there are so many opportunities that await you out there. There are so many there's so many benefits of being of being a Yali RLC fellow. And if you're part of this fellowship, it's going to give you the opportunity to, to learn from industry experts from Ghana and from other African countries. You'll be able to network with other African leaders. It will improve your knowledge. You'll be able to collaborate with other persons. Like the knowledge you're going to acquire from this fellowship is second to none. The experience is a memorable one and it's mind blowing. I must confess, it's a wonderful experience because I'm talking from my own experience as a Yali RLC fellow this fellowship is going to open greater doors and greater opportunities for you and i know what this fellowship has done for me and you are here this evening i'm here this evening i'm not here alone i'm here with my colleagues with two amazing young ladies and a young man we'll all be here we are here this evening to share our experiences with with you we're here to guide you on how to successfully apply for this you know, this fellowship. These are amazing individuals who are doing great in their sectors. Yeah, these are individuals who have achieved a lot. And we are here to listen to all your questions. We're here to guide you. We're here to put you through in the application process. So I promise you all to stay put because we have a lot in stock for you. So before, but before we go into the application, you know, questions proper, I would like to you know, talk to us briefly about Yali, about Yali. You know, some persons um, don't really know what Yali is all about, especially over the weeks. A lot of persons have been chatting me up, asking me different questions about Yali. And I observed that some persons are actually confused yeah, because we have the Yali RLC, we have the MWF, which, which is the Mandela Washington Fellowship, and we have um, the Yali Network. So sometimes people get to, you know, misplace these three and they are confused about it. So I'm going to be, you know, talking to us about Yali, what it's all about, and then we go into the application questions. So Young African Leaders Initiative was launched by United States um, former President Barack Obama as, an, as a signature effort to invest in the next generation of, of African leaders. Now, the Yali Talking about Yali, Yali has you know three categories. We have the Mandela Washington Fellowship, where you get to you know travel to the United States and you're being sent across to different universities to learn across to learn 
to learn um, under great leaders and you know experts, people who are experts in the various field. We have the Young African um, Leaders Initiative, the Regional Leadership Center West Africa. That's the RLC where you're being sent to, you know, um, Ghana. We actually have the Yali RLC West Africa. We have. East Africa, we have South Africa, you know, it depends on where your country is. So since we are, since we're in the Western part of Africa, the Yali um, program that is, that is for us is the Yali RLC West Africa, where you're being sent to Ghana to learn from industry experts and learn, and learn from, you know, great men and women there in Ghana. And this Yali RLC, it actually has the online cohort and the on-site cohort. So this current cohort is the on-site cohort where you get to travel to Ghana and all expenses will be paid. They'll pay for your trip, going, coming back, your accommodation, everything will be paid for. So you just have to, you know, be successful in your application and you have to um, remember to have your international passport because it's very important for you to, you know, scale through in this application. Then we also have the online, you know, the online cohort. So we have both on-site and we have um, online Cohort. So now the Yali RLC West Africa is seeks to empower young men and women between the ages of 18 to 35. So you must be within this age range, 18 to 35, and you must be um, from Togo, Cameroon, Nigeria, Ivory Coast, the Gambia, Burkina Faso, Liberia, and Sierra Leone. This is not a small fellowship. Like you need to put your best foot forward because you have people, you're competing with people from different different African countries. So you need to put in the best in your application. You need to put in the very best. You need to, you know, learn the art of storytelling. You need to, you need, you need to learn the art of, you know, storytelling to be able to, you know, scale through in your, in your application. Okay, so can you hear me? Can you hear me? I hope I'm not talking to myself. Yeah, we can hear you. Can we all hear me? Yes, yes, yes we can. Okay, so just, just like I stated earlier, a lot of us, okay, yeah, okay, okay, all right, okay. So let me just, you know, go ahead. So I was saying that this application, you need to put your best foot forward because you are competing with people from different African countries. So you need to put in the best application. And apart from applying, after applying, you still get to a stage where you will get to, you know, you get to be um, interviewed before the final selection process. So you, you need to know how to, you know, tell the story to be, enticing and for you to get selected okay um okay so before i go ahead to introduce our speakers i want to and introduce them then i will share something with us before we can go into the questions so just like i said you need to be very prepared bring all your experiences and you also need to have a proven track record to be able to scale through in this application so these are the things i think I'll, i'm going to stop here for now so i'll be able to introduce our speakers then i'll share a little um should i say like a secret or my secrets or how i successfully apply for fellowships before we can now go into the questions so here this evening we have two amazing young women and an amazing young man who are our speakers this evening who will be joining me. They are my colleagues. They are my fellow Yali RLC, you know, alumni or alumnus. So I'll be starting with Marvelyn. I'll be starting with Marvelyn. I'll have to read out Marvelyn's profile before we could go ahead. So Marvelyn Eckhart is an extraordinary pharmacist by profession. Kim interested in public health as a reforms to income of the Young African Leaders Initiative, RLC. West Africa, Ghana, cohort fifth coordinator of it, and is interning at the University of Uyo Chichen Hospital. Marvelyn's work is to combat non-communicable diseases like cancer, diabetes, dementia, hypertension, and communicable diseases like hepatitis, flu, HIV, and AIDS through numerous projects that cannot go unmentioned. And her story isn't without the past as she has a true academic career, business, and life journey. Her, enthusi her enthusiasm for knowledge and leading initiatives has earned her over 70 certifications. Wow, that's amazing. So Marvelyn here in our midst has over 
70 certifications, including all across diverse aspects of health, leadership, advocacy, education, human capital development, entrepreneurship, and gender equality, as well as membership in several and international organizations. She describes herself as a comedian, from a preneur skilled at using the media and humor to pass the good, to pass the message of good health and well-being in the most informative, educating, yet entertaining manner. When she's not teaching young people about leadership, entrepreneurship, academic excellence, and public service at Innovation Hub, okay, she's making all kinds of Ankara and clothes crafts and teaching people at Versus World, where she also sells all kinds of corporate dresses, bags, shoes, accessories. If she's not doing this, she's doing health, beauty, lifestyle, consultancy at Marvel's World with her Ori Flame products and cosmetics. Wow, Marvelyn. <laughs> Your profile is amazing. You're welcome. You're welcome, Marvelyn. You're welcome, Marvelyn. Thank you so okay, much. So <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome, Marvelyn. So let me go ahead to read... Um, Fumi's profile. Let me go ahead to read Fumi's profile. So Olufumi Oloashun is a community is a communications manager, TV presenter, and development professional with over seven years experience in the nonprofit sector. Fumi has led teams of people from diverse backgrounds and countries to carry out humanitarian activities in the in line with the SDGs. Fumi has experience in donor relations management and fundraising, having engaged stakeholders to donate to various non-profit activities that benefit low-income families. Fumi Olufumi Olawoshun is passionate about youth development and mentorship. Olufumi Olawoshun currently the coordinator of Yali Network Lagos State. Wow. And the deputy coordinator, Yali RLC Nigeria alumni, Southwest region. She has received education from University of Lagos, Oxford University, and Lagos Business School. Fumi, you're welcome. You're welcome, Fumi. You're welcome, Fumi. Okay, go ahead to read George's profile. Onyedika George holds a bachelor's degree in biochemistry from Anambra State University, Willi. George has over four years of experience in business development and management. Currently, he is a managing partner at Sandworks Limited, an indigenous dredging company with operations in Ogun and Lagos State, where he's responsible but not limited to guiding the, com the company's strategic direction, managing the day to day activity, as well as reviewing business operations and setting strategies for long term goals. George is an alumnus of the Young African Leaders Initiative, RLC West Africa, and also an, an alumnus of the Africa Leadership Institute Business Development Fellowship, ALI. George is passionate about community service and volunteering. He has been a volunteer with the Rotrat Club of Mpo since 2016. Wow, that's amazing. That should be about six years in volunteering, amazing where he has served in diverse capacities, such as the community service director through, his, through this office. He has also collaborated with community leaders to create initiatives driven by his community commitment to continually develop himself, inspire a change in the hearts of people and constantly seek ways to contribute to his community. You're welcome, George. You're welcome, George. George, you're welcome. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Good evening, okay. Chemaka. Okay, you're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome, George. You're welcome, Marvelin. You're welcome, Fumi. You're welcome, George. So, but before we bring our speakers on board, I would love to share a few things with us, like a few things with us in just a few minutes, yeah? I want to share a few things with us before um, I can bring our our speakers on board, okay? So um, I want to tell us something. I want to, you know, tell us some things. So before you start any fellowship application, let's see, let's say you, you see a link or you see an application online, okay? So there's some basic things you need to do before you start that particular application. Sometimes I used to be amazed <laughs> and I used to be marveled when I share links with some of my friends to apply because I constantly share links on my, on my WhatsApp oh, status. Yes, I do yes, that yes. and I share links among my friends. So sometimes I do get marveled when, let's say, I share links with 
If you're not me, please speak yourself. Is this okay? Okay, so I'm going to be. Okay, so I used to be, you know, marveled when, let's say, I share a link with my friend today, and I hear the next day, ah, I'm like, I'm done applying. I'll be like, how? Oh, I don't understand. I just shared this link with you yesterday, and you're done applying just in one day, or within a few minutes. So within a few minutes, that are done. I'm like, are you serious? Are you for real? So before you... Can we hear me? Can we hear me? Can we hear me? Is it network? Can we hear me? Go ahead, we can hear you. I think it was network. Okay, so before you start applying for any particular application, there's some things you need to do. That's some basic things you need to do, okay? First of all, what I do is, when I see a link for an application, the first thing I do is to first go to um, the site of that particular organization that is put, putting out that application. Let's say Yali, for instance. So the first thing you need to do is to go to Yali website. You need to read about Yali. You need to have a good understanding of what that organization is doing. You need to know, you need to understand their vision. You need to understand their mission. Who are these guys? When did they start? What have they been doing over the years? What is it that they want? What are they looking out for in this application? Okay, so you need to understand their mission. You need to understand their vision so that when you are applying for that particular fellowship, you will understand how you are going to, you know, how to tell your story or how to answer those questions to suit what they are looking out for or to suit what they are already doing. So you need to understand this. You don't just see an application and you just rush in to start applying. No, that's wrong. So you need to understand what they are doing. Apart from that, before you apply for any particular fellowship or any application at all, you need to go through their eligibility criteria. This thing I'm trying to apply for, am I eligible for it? Am I qualified for it? What's the age range? Is it 18 to 25? Is it 18 to 40? Is it 18 to 35? Am I really eligible for this application? Now talking about the YALI, this YALI RLC um, application, we have several eligibility for it, okay? I'm going to be reading out those elig eligibility criteria for us now. First of all, you need to have a demonstrated leadership in public service, business and entrepreneurship or civic engagement. Because this, this um, YALI RLC um, training, this LRC fellowship, it has three tracks. And my colleagues are going to come on board to explain these three different tracks for, for us. We have the public service, public policy, we have the business and entrepreneurship, we have the civic engagement. So you need to have a demonstrated leadership in either of these. You need to be actively engaged in public service, community service, volunteerism, or mentorship. Some persons, sometimes when I, sometimes when I um, volunteer, okay, some persons will be like, I'm like, you always volunteer, you're always doing this, who is even paying you? Why are you always, you know, doing these things? So you need to have, um, you need to have a proven track record. So you need to volunteer. You need to be, you need to continuous, continuously volunteer. Just like me, I, I started volunteering in 2016. This should be my sixth year as a volunteer. Wherever I am today is volunteerism. Volunteerism has done a lot for me. It has done a whole lot for me. And yeah, should I say yes? It, it has fetched me awards. In 2020, I was recognized by United Nations volunteer, Volunteers. Why? Just because of my volunteerism. Okay, so this is something we should always be doing. So I think I should just pause here for now and bring my colleagues on board. Then later on, I'll continue with this um, eligi eligibility criteria and also teach us some things before that. So now I'll be bringing George on board. Just like I stated earlier, we have the three tracks of this fellowship. We have the business and entrepreneurship. We have the public policy and we have the civic engagement. So George, I want John to come on board now to, to talk to us in a few minutes about the uh, business track, about the entrepreneurship track, what it is all about and what is expected of us. So George, you have the floor now, George. Good evening, everyone. Um, Good evening, you... George. Yes, I yeah. can. Good evening, George. Um, thank you, Chair Maka. I also want to appreciate everyone who's present, as well as uh, my fellow alumni, Marvin and Lao Shun. Good evening to everyone. So um, to answer your question, uh, Chemaka, basically Chemaka has given an overview of what um, YAL is, but just uh, maybe perhaps for persons who joined when she must have moved past that. Um, YAL is basically uh, is a leadership program. You understand it was launched by the United States government as a signature um, effort to invest in the next generation of African leaders. 
And just like she stated earlier, Yali has three thematic areas, although in Yali they refer to them as tracks. They are called tracks, you understand? They have three tracks, which is um, we have the business on entrepreneurship. We have George, I can't hear you. George? Hello, can you hear me? We can hear him. You just need to be we, more can, we, can, we can hear him. Okay. Okay, perhaps I should be more audible. Okay, so in Yali, there are three thematic areas. Uh, in Yali, actually, we call them tracks. We have the business on entrepreneurship, which I'll be um, discussing about. Then we have civic leadership. Then we have public um, service management. Then for the business on entrepreneurship, uh, this is um, the thematic area of Yali that focuses or caters to the range of imagined or expiring entrepreneurs or business inclined persons, you understand, who expect to take on leadership roles within the private sector of business or who intend to go further to build their own business ventures on the continent. So this is just like a big grammar. Basically what the entrepreneurship and business track of Yali does is that it caters for um, business enthusiasts. If you're inclined towards business, you want to work in the private, uh, you want to work in the private sector as a business person, or you have your own business, or you're looking to um, start up your own business, this is the particular track you should apply to in Yali. You know, Yali is so holistic that it's not just uh, a bandwagon that everybody comes and goes. You understand? In as much as they are in Yali, there are basically three courses, the leadership and accountability, we have ethics, we have contemporary issues affecting Africa. These are courses whereby every um, applicant, every fellow, you know, start, go through. They have been, uh, we have facilitators that take this program, but we also have elective courses. Now, these elective courses are peculiar to your, um, to your track. For those who are going for civic leadership, they have elective courses. They are courses that are specifically made for, uh, you know, fellows that are in the civic leadership um, track. We have elective courses for persons in public service management, and we have elective courses for persons that choose business or entrepreneurship. Now, for example, if you're an applicant, you you have a track record of business, or intend to you have your own business, or intend to start up your own business, or the business and entrepreneurship track appeals to you. We'll be having um, elective courses like something like um, entrepreneur mindset. It's the what Yali basically does is to build or to emphasize or elaborate that leadership quality in you. Uh, in as much as there are other leaders you'll be collaborating with, but I still believe that um, every leader do not possess the same skill. As a business leader, as a leader in in business, we have Dangote do not put the way Dangote thinks is not the same way Ngozi Konjo Wala thinks. But however, these are outstanding leaders, you understand? So in reality, they try as much as possible to bring out uh to to emphasize your core values. So for persons in business and entrepreneurship, you're having courses like entrepreneurship mindsets, you understand where they teach you how to generate business ideas, where they teach you how to identify business opportunities. You'll be having courses also as social um, courses on things like social enterprise management. You know, as a business person, one of the things you'll be doing is you'll be communicating. You communicate with your clients, you communicate with customers, you have to write letters, you have to write reports, you have to write memos, you have to send emails. And each and every one of these have techniques, you understand? The way you communicate as a business person is not the way you communicate if you're in the civic leadership space or if you're a public service um, personnel, you understand? So these are the things they try to teach you in business management. What are the skills? They try to hone that um, business development skills for persons that will be choosing um, business management. So for want of time, in summary, the business and entrepreneurship um, track in Yali caters to if you're someone that business and entrepreneurship um, um, inclined, you have a penchant for business or starting up your own business, or you would like to work uh, in the private sector, we have a whole lot of persons in business, persons like Tony Limelu, these are all, they're all business persons, they're entrepreneurs, you understand? So if this, um, if these are the kind of things you want to do, then your track should be business and entrepreneurship. I think that is it from my end from now. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you so much for sharing, George. Yeah, so George, 
you know, did justice to that particular track. So we heard from George. George has, you know, taken out time to explain to us what it takes to, you know, choose the business and entrepreneurship track because you're going to be asked this, this in your application. And you need to understand these tracks before you choose the particular one you, you want to go into for. I do my own self, my, my own time. I chose the business and entrepreneurship track because I'm an entrepreneur. So um, now I'll bring in Fumi on board to, to talk about the public policy track. So Fumi, are you here? Can you hear me? Fumi. Fumi. Hi, Jim. How are you? Hi, Fumi. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. I'm Hi. good. Yes, I can hear you. Good evening. Good evening. Okay. <laughs> the other time, I was actually trying to unmute. So before I could do that, you had already moved on, so I had to leave it. So good evening, everyone. It's good it's to okay. be here. Okay. Thank you for having me, Chia Maka. Um, and it's good to see quite a number of people on the call who are interested in applying for Yali RLC. Uh, interestingly, interestingly, I met Chia Maka during my RLC. Chia Maka, correct? <laughs> we yes, were in the same cohort. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> we were in the same cohort. So you see, that's one of the beauty of uh, being an RLC. Um, exactly. Like this, the networking community, because we were in the same cohort and we got talking and here we are today. And um, yes, yes, yes. Even when she um, requested if I could be on board even when she requested I, could, I would be on board today, I'd already had something like this in mind, but when she came, I said, no, I have to be here. And I'm even glad to see members of Yali Network Lagos. I can actually see some very familiar names from Yali Network Lagos on this call. Um, now for public policy and management. Now for the interesting thing about me is that if you were to look at my line of work, public policy may not necessarily fall into that place. Uh, for I work with an NGO. Uh, we work in Nigeria, but we work in over 80 countries of the world. And if you were to go by that, I would actually have gone through the civil, uh, you know, society, the civil management track. But I went through like to public policy and management for a reason. Now, this is me. I am not saying you should do the same. I had a reason for doing that. And for this track, this track um, is really for people who are interested in working in maybe any level of government. I mean, you hear the word public policy, I mean, people who are interested in making policies and um, working in positions that actually handle like public matters. So that's what it is. So it's for people who are interested in working in maybe any level of government, or maybe you want to work in certain kind of organizations or international, maybe like the UN, for example. I mean, you heard Chair Maka say she um, was awarded in the UNB um, as volunteers, one of them. So such public organizations that focus on people, that focus on how to, you know, for the greater good, so to say, of society, that's what public policy is about. And the reason I did that is because I was future thinking, meaning it was more like a future kind of thing. Because what I was expecting was that I needed, I, I, I wanted the training for that track, not necessarily because, okay, this was something I had done. Once again, once again, please, this is for me. I'm not saying you should do that. <laughs> so this was what I wanted. So I wanted to learn about public policy. I wanted to learn about public management. And in a sense, the work I did with my NGO also had to do with that. So that's what I leveraged upon. So you can also see that even though I went in a track that was kind of not connected to what I do, it was, it also laid the foundation because in my NGO, we work with communities and we offer solutions. I mean, basic amenities such as food, education and the like. So it, it, it was connected. It was not, so it's not like um, I, I've worked with an NGO and I'm jumping to go do business. So there was a connection. That's what I'm trying to say. So really that's what the public policy is about. So if you're interested, maybe for example, you want to run for a particular office, you want to work in an organization like maybe the UN, you want to work in an organization like African, you know, maybe some of these organizations that just focus on helping communities, they focus on developing policies, you know, coming up with solutions, you know, maybe social innovation, you're thinking how to maybe solve a particular challenge in your society or in your community then that's where the public policy and management track comes in. And I, I, for me, really, um, 
even part of what I did in my work with the NGO, I would still say that that was what stood me apart because I remember, I don't know if we got into that point in this, um, but I remember during my interview, the person who called me literally zeroed on one thing. That was literally the one thing the person focused on. And that was, if, if you looked at what I'd written in my application that the person picked up and said, oh, you wrote this, this, this in your application. Tell me more, tell me more about it. You could actually see it was connected to, you know, public management there about, even though it was more of the NGO background. And I think at this point, I will also want to say that, um, in your line of work, I know, yes, it's good to put your hands in a lot of things, but one of the challenges some people have is the fact that they are into everything. Like you are here, there, you are in health, you're in education, you are, you're just everywhere. We can't, we can't really pick to say, this is your core focus. Of course, um, nobody's saying you can't be multi, you know, talented and do a lot of things. Maybe, for example, you, you volunteer, you volunteer here, you volunteer there. Maybe you're trying to gather experience. That is good. But you see, you have to have one central thing that we can pin. Like, I'm this, for example, there's someone in Yale Network Lagos, you know, if I go to her page, I don't need to be told that she's an educationist. Like, it's so clear. Her passion is so clear. So if she's talking to you, you don't, even just hearing her speak, seeing her post, I think I actually saw this for a minute ago, but seeing her post, you know, this is this person's direction. So that's the thing in applying for RLC. As much as you want to impress them with all your achievements, you want to tell them how you have done this, you've done that, it's good, that is good. But you must be able to bring it up into one, meaning all of those different things you have done, you need to bring it back into one clear direction. My own direction was the fact that I wanted to be involved in public management as in terms of uh, policy making, in terms of politics, it's, and that, that's my direction. That is where I'm headed to. So all I'm doing in my NGO work currently is all geared towards that. So I was able to tie everything I had done in the past to focus on that. So even as a communications manager, as a TV, all of that is for one goal. Because I mean, you can't be someone who is a public officer and you are not able to communicate with your people. You are not able to, you know, um, share clearly the, the ideas you have, the goals you have. So for me, that's really what I would, I would say. The first thing, like I said, whatever track you want to pick up from, you have to have clear evidence that this is something that you have done or something you, are, you have done in the past is connected to this, not just, just jump out of the blue because that, that's what stands you apart. And also you have to have clear examples. That's why I always try to tell people, even in volunteering, you it's good to volunteer, but volunteer with a goal in mind, else you're just going to be expending energy. There are a lot of people like that. You, know, you go here, go there, but at the end, you're not able to bring out something solid to say that, okay, at the end of this one year of volunteering, this is who I have become. This is what I have gained. This is the line I have entered now. So that's the mistake a lot of people make. And they try to jam all of this many, many, many things, you know, into the application. You know, I wish I to tell people that if you're applying for something, of course, this doesn't always apply because sometimes some applications are very competitive, whether we like it or not. <laughs> you can be so good and they will still tell you that, you know what, um, we have just 10 slots and, you know, there's just someone else that would rather go through this slot. Don't take it personal. It's not about you, really. It's not. You just focus on being you and adding value to yourself. But you also need to put yourself in the minds of the people who are reading your application. If you read your own application and it is not um, easy for you to read, my dear, then you know that there's something. So I think I'm just going to stop here for now um, and hand over to Chair Maka. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for sharing, Fumi. Thank you so, so much. That was amazing. Thank you so much for this wonderful input. Thank you so much for putting us through on what the public policy track is all about. So um, without wasting much of our time, I want to bring Marvelyn on board to talk about the civic engagement track. So Marvelyn, Marvelyn, are you here with us? Yes, I am. Okay, Marvelyn, you're welcome once again. I'm so excited to have you here. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so just you know, talk to us about the civic engagement track. Thank you. Yes, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much, Chem. Well done, George. Well done, Fumi. Good to have every one of us here. 
So my name is Marvlin Eckhart and I met Amaka at um, one of the volunteering opportunities I engaged in first. That was Start Start Conference. Right. <laughs> Yeah. And then I saw her again, the Yali yeah. RLC, my cohort, exactly. I was super damn excited. So like she said, it's very important to start somewhere and start volunteering. So um, straight to what the civic leadership track, it's called the civic leadership track or civic engagement track. Um, straight to what it is all about. It is basically the section of the Yali RLC Emerging Leaders Program that deals with people who are engaging in corporate social responsibilities, civic engagements, um, uh, civil society organizations, non-governmental organizations, and all of that. So for years, I was really volunteering in aspects of health, leadership. And like Fumi said, I'm a very uh, multi-talented, multi-potentialist kind of person. But for the purpose of this application, I tried to streamline it down to one thing so that my application could fit the track I was interested in, which was the civic leadership track. It's important that no matter what you're doing, no matter where you are, no matter how many skills you have, no matter how many things you've done and volunteered for, for the purpose of the um, application, you select the activities you've done that are most relevant to the line of application. So if you're a business person who is also doing a lot of other things and you want to apply for the business um, track, definitely you structure your application to business. If you're an NGO person who is also doing a lot of other things, doing business, um, working for policy reforms and doing one or two things in politics, you'd have to structure your application in that regard. So the thin line between civic um, leadership track and the public policy track is the fact that for the civic leadership, you are more for the citizens, you are more for the non-governmental organization aspects, you are more for the civil society organizations, you are more for the corporate social responsibility, while in the public policy um, aspects, you are more into politics, policy reforms, and um, full-time leadership. So one thing that you have to do in your application, if you want to get selected for this track, is that you have to be passionate about what you're doing. And you have to be very sincere. You don't necessarily have to have founded an NGO or founded a couple of organizations or stuff. But those ones you volunteered for, you should be able to explain to them in a convincing way how you were able to display some level of leadership. As much as Yali is um, about emerging leaders, you have to have a track record of leadership already. They don't really want novices. They want people who are already doing something. So for me, there's this trick I had because one of the basics they would ask for, in addition to your postal code, your um, WhatsApp ID, your Skype number, your international passport, when you're applying is your Facebook address. So like when I was interviewed, that's in the second stage. I'm just throwing this in because I know that a lot of us will make it to the second stage of the application. The interviewer was basically on my Facebook page. And even though I wrote a lot because as much as you don't have to lie, you don't also have to undermine yourself. So I did a lot already at that time of the application. I started volunteering right from um, 2015. So different organizations, different aspects, I did a whole lot. So it's a case of for everything I do, I put it out there on social media. If it's not my Facebook, it's on my WhatsApp, it's on my LinkedIn, it's on my Instagram, just so that um, the relevant bodies that need to know about these things can know that this is what I do. And from there, I had more recommendations for more opportunities and all of that. So when the interviewer was on my page, he actually saw that the URLs I put were all accurate and I wasn't lying. It's not like a post I just made. So this is for those of you who undermine or downplay what you do on social media. You're always posting crews. For applications like this, trust me, Ali would go to your social media and see what you're doing. And it has to be in line with what you've claimed. So. They don't need someone that is just going to lie about stuff. For people who want to choose the civic um, leadership track, you need to be passionate about what you're doing, have a track record of experience, have the mind to put in your best in the course of the training, tell them what you want to learn, what you're expecting, tell them what you're bringing to the program, and then go ahead and apply. 
Thank you. I think I'll stop here so that. Thank you so much. Thank you so, so much, Marvelyn. Thank you so much, Marvelyn, for sharing. Okay, so there's something I got from, um, there's something Marvelyn said, and Fumi said the same thing too, and that is having a particular niche, having a particular, you might be doing so many things, but you need to have a particular you know, theme, like a particular story or a particular area you're going to use for this particular application. Just like me, um, I volunteer a lot and I actually work in the nonprofit space, okay? So looking at all the work I've been doing, you would actually like, you, you might actually think I would have gone for the civic engagement but funny enough, that wasn't my track. I actually went for the business and entrepreneurship because that was the track I wanted to um, use in my application. And that's what I wanted to do because I'm also an entrepreneur. So you don't need to tell stories about everything you're doing. Just tell a particular story. Just be, just follow one, you know, particular track. So that was, I, I just remember this because um, for me and Marvin said that. Then I want to say something very important again from what Marvin just said. Talking about Facebook, okay, most of us here know me, know me um, on Facebook and know, they know me on LinkedIn and all of that, my social media handles. One thing I've done over the years is I am very, very intentional about my Facebook. My Facebook name is Chamaka Jonathan. I'm very, very intentional about my Facebook. Why? Because of stuff like this, because of opportunities like this, but people don't know. People don't know that putting these things out there, you know, they open doors and opportunities for you. I can remember during our application for Yali RLC, we were asked to put in our Facebook links. We we're asked to put in our LinkedIn, all our social media platforms. We put it there. Now, if you check my, my Facebook page and you check over the years, you'll see all the things I've been doing. Sometimes people chat me up, Amaka, why are you always, I get this all the time. Yes, I do. People chat me up every time. Amaka, why are you always putting all these things out there? You're always telling us what you're doing. You're always doing this. You're always doing that. Sometimes I just smile. I don't even give them any answer. I smile. I'm like, yeah, I, I need to put them out there because these things, you know, they pave way, they open more opportunities for me. So I'm very intentional about my social media platforms because I know that there are so many applications that I've done. They'll tell you, put your Facebook link because definitely they're going to go there and they're going to see what you've done. Just like Marvin said, these guys are looking for people that have been doing things. You must have a demonstrated, you know, experience in leadership. You, you must have been doing amazing things already before you apply for this um, program. That is why it's called leadership program. So whenever I would encourage all of us, whenever you're doing things, no matter how little, let's say you did a training, you impacted 10%, you impacted um, 15%, put it out there. And again, whenever you're putting out these stuff, put numbers numbers it's very the numbers are very important in application if you train 10 persons say i train 10 persons don't lie oh please don't lie if you train 100 say i train 100 persons even as you're making this post out there just put it out there so that even when they are checking your maybe they're running a background check on you and are checking your previous post they'll say ah this girl has already done this and the, um, she's already just like me over the years i've trained two thousand women on my skill on my fascinator um, on my heart making skill because I said I'm an entrepreneur. I, I own a fashion brand where I produce beaded jewelries and fascinators. That's hat. So what I do every time, every year, I make out time to train people for free. Okay, I train people for free. So whenever you're doing those things, you, you take pictures, beautiful pictures, you put the numbers. I train 20 women in my community because I decided to give back to my community because someone like me, I'm very passionate about community service i love giving back to my community i'm always volunteering you know this it makes me happy whenever i'm in the community you know doing community work i there is this sense of purpose and fulfillment i get so that is what um, i do so i would also encourage us all always learn to put out stuff out there on social media so before we go into the questions we'll be going into the questions now that's the essay part because that's um those questions are kind of critical there is a a way there's a method of answering those questions but before i go in there i would like to share you know some things with you you know i was i was talking to us earlier on about um the eligibility if you're not please meet yourself i was talking about the eligibility of yali rlc you know, I was reading them out for us before um, George came on board. So I'll just, you know, read them out again. Before you apply for this fellowship, you need to have a demonstrated leadership in public service, business and entrepreneurship, or civic engagement. You need to be very active in public or community service, volunteerism, or mentorship. You see, the importance of volunteering cannot be overemphasized, okay? If you're not a volunteer, you can just start. <laughs> it's not late, okay? You need to be, you need to have a strong, social and communication skills. Can we hear me? 
Who am I talking to myself? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. We can. Okay, fine. Yeah. So you need to you need to have an energetic and positive attitude. You need to have a demonstrated knowledge, interest, and professional experience in this in the track or in the sector you selected. You need to have a commitment to apply leadership skills and training to be, to benefit your country or community after the program. Some persons, when they go for all these fellowships, all these trainings, they just come back. They don't do anything. You need to you know have this ability to impact train the younger generation, train people in your community, impact the knowledge you've gained, you've gained from this fellowship, teach people around you, okay? So um, this is, these are the um, eligibility for this particular um, fellowship. For those that are joining later, I said something else. Before you start any application, make sure you read about that organization very well. You need to learn about their mission. You need to learn about their vision. You need to know what they do so that your answers will be tailored to their mission to be tailored to what they what they already what they already do okay so this is going to help you to scale through your applications i normally whenever i see applications i take my time to read about that and i might i might spend three days four days reading about them so that i will know how to you know answer those particular questions so another thing i do is <laughs> is i check criteria for selection it might sound funny, but I do that. Sometimes I just browse what's the criteria for selection um, for this particular um, fellowship. And funny enough, I do see, <laughs> I don't know, but I do see them when I check. So I check for the eligibility, read about their mission, read about their vision, if possible, browse about their criteria for selection. Another thing I do is I go online to search for fellows, previous fellows, okay? Let's say you've heard about Yali RLC, just ask around. Do you know anybody who is a Yali RLC fellow? Check online, you see them, reach out to them, talk to them, please. Um, I want to apply for this um, fellowship. I don't know how to do it. Please, can you guide me? Please, can you mentor me? Okay, so just go online and search for these people or ask around. That should be somebody or someone who would help you, you know, to, to guide you so that, you, so that you'll be able to ace your application. So before we go out to talk about the questions, I want you to teach us something briefly, okay? So there is something I want you to teach us. It is called the STAR approach. So before you, um, let's say you have an application and they ask, they ask you questions, maybe questions that are relating to your behavior. And like that's, that's something we call behavioral questions, questions that would you know, make the interviewer or make the organization to, um, Let's say they're trying to assess your kind of person, they're trying to assess your behavior. So those questions are called behavioral questions. And if you're in a position or if you're in a situation where you are asked this kind of questions, there is a method, there is a process to answer this kind of questions. And I want to talk to us, I want to teach us this evening, there's something we call the STAR approach. You, you need to learn the art of storytelling in application. You need to tell stories. You don't just go straight to answer questions. You give them a real life example. You need to tell stories. Now, when I say the STAR approach, STAR STAR is an acronym. The S means situation. The T is task. The A is action. And the R is result. Okay, the S is the situation. That's the specific situation. Like the scene, what happened? You have to set the scene and give the necessary details of your particular example. What happened in that particular occasion? What was the task? Describe your responsibility in, in that particular situation. That is what I mean when I'm talking about the task. Now, the action, what did you do? What exactly did you do? You have to explain exactly what steps you took to, to you know, address that particular situation. And you have to talk about the results of the situation. What now happened at the end, okay? So you have to, just like I said, you have to talk about the results. So you need to share what outcomes your actions achieved. So now this time method gives you a straightforward format you can use to tell a story by laying out <coughs> the star sorry, by laying out the situation, the task, the action, and the results. And this STAR method is used when you are asked to provide a real life example of how you handled a particular situation. Okay, so this um, this STAR method is gonna to come to play when, when you're answering your questions, you see where they talk about, where they will ask you questions on your interpersonal skills, they ask you questions on your administrative skills, leadership skills. So you, you're meant to tell a story, okay? So I hope we got this. Are we following? <laughs> Can we hear me? Yes, yes, we are. Fine. So, um, yes, we yes. Time this evening. Uh, let's go straight into the essay questions, okay? Because some persons are always confused about how to answer these questions. So now we have the leadership profile in 
in the application, okay? Now, we have a part where you'll be asked to talk about yourself. That part where you're asked to talk about yourself, you are, you'll be asked to give a summary or overview of your accomplishments written in the third person. So I'll be calling on George, okay? So George, I want you to you know, talk to us about answering this particular question. When you're being asked about yourself, tell us about yourself, because I observe that most persons don't even know how to talk about themselves. They don't know how to give a profile about themselves. So George, if, if someone is being asked Tell us about yourselves, your accomplishments, written in the third person. How should the person write it? George, you have the floor now. All right. Thank you, Chair Maka. I also want to use this opportunity to appreciate uh, Olufumi and Mavli for their contributions. They spoke so well. So um, speaking about the leadership profile, uh, this is usually, I think this is usually the first patient in Yali. Believe in me, this is like Yali's open check to you. They say a leadership profile. That's something I always tell people, you have to be very intentional when answering um, your leadership profile. First of all, I also like to make emphasis about the eligibility. That's something um, eligibility or being eligible uh, for a particular application does boost your confidence. You understand? A whole lot of times, some persons see applications just, okay, yeah, uh, they jump on yeah, they apply. You understand? You don't take time to look at the eligibility um, criteria to see where you fit in, you fit in, or what are your strengths and all of that. But when you pay attention to all these things, it gives you certain level of confidence when filling out the application. So for the leadership profile, just like I said, this is Yali's, um, this is Yali's open check. You don't have to be modest. I tell people, see, blow your trumpet. The, you there are thousands of people applying so if an application like the Ali, there are thousands of applications so you don't have to be modest about um let's say don't be as if it's wrong if you've done things say then you have to be very very careful also you have to be very 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 intentional only for me uh marvin said something the, the truth is more often than not um young leaders one of the things you know that you need is your multi-dimensional um Prowess. You, you you have this tendency to be able to get a whole lot of things done. You're in a particular sphere, you're doing this, you're doing that, but you're still maintaining focus. Now, don't get it twisted. Don't start your leadership profile. You're starting your in your first paragraph, you're telling your business. Okay, first of all, let me say this. If you're, if you're writing a leadership profile in the third person, it has to do with you're making reference. It's as though someone is writing it for you. You don't say, uh, my name is... You, you understand? Um, I will like to, you don't use I. I is a first person pronoun. You don't use so let's say for instance a leadership profile. You see, I'll start with something like Onye Dike George is a graduate of Lasu. He has over five years of experience in teaching and research. Then your next paragraph, you don't have to get carried away and say. I, I would like to know. You said Oedika George is passionate about volunteerism and community service. Oedika George in the past years has contributed in his community to doing so, 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 so. You understand, like you're using the third person. You don't personalize it. You don't use I, which is the first person pronoun. You're using third, like you're making reference. You're writing it as though you're making reference. So please pay attention to that because some of the things you need to, some of the things that a whole lot of times people say, I, I wrote a very good application, what happened? It's tiny things like this, you understand, like instructions. If you say write in third person and you're writing in first at first person, no matter how good your application are, you're reading, you're already disadvantaged. I don't know if you understand. So now coming down to the professional, um, the leadership profile, the one style person, it's about your storytelling. Whether you like it or not, you're not the best. No matter what you've done or whatever it is you have, you're not the best. Then also, no matter how little your experience is, you're not the least qualified. It's about how you be. I've seen a whole lot of persons, particularly Yali. I met a particular young person. I was discussing with him. He said, oh, more that he has applied to Yali for like four or five times. Like, what's happening? And sincerely, this is someone that has done a lot. It's done a lot. I told him, see, it's not just about what you've done or what you've not done. It's about how you do it. Chamaka said something about using numbers. I always tell people, qualify and quantify your aces. It gives, it gives, it gives you an edge. Let's say, for instance, you, you've, you don't even have much experience as a teacher. 
or as a businessman, you perhaps worked with a small business, an SME, you understand, or you've just taught um, you, 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 your next, um, secondary school teacher, or even an NRIC, um, you call member, you don't really have much experience. It's not just about like so much, you know, someone can easily come and write, uh, I'm, I'm a youth call member, I teach chemistry and biology for SS2 students, um, I want to, I have been volunteering with, um, with road tracks. I've been doing so well. Um, yeah, you understand, like you're reading, you, you, but you also see someone with that kind of, um, with similar, with similar experience, who is also a teacher. When I say, okay, um, I teach, um, I've over the past two years, I've, I've taught, um, over 200 nursery school students on mathematics and English, um, covering, um, over seven hundred hours of um, seven hours of pedagogical work, I've also volunteered with the Rotary Club of Lagos, and with that, um, I served in a particular. I've served as um, the community service director, and I was able to collaborate with leaders to create initiatives like end polio campaign, um, sanitation exercises, which we were able to reach out to over five thousand um, five thousand persons in the community, and has improved the quality of life of people in my environment. Can you see the difference? It's not just, it's not like you're blowing things out of proportion, but it's the way you say it. The way you say things matters a lot. So your leadership profile, you have to be very deliberate because that is like your first impression in reality. You have to be very deliberate. You have to blow. See, I always tell people, see, if you've done things, say it. If you've done things, say it. Then most importantly, quantify these things. Quantify them, saying in such a way that it makes, because, just imagine a particular facilitator or a particular reader is going to read, let's say, 100 essays. And he keeps seeing um, similar boring things because the attention span is limited. At most, they might spend like maybe one minute or so in your application. But you understand, the way you tell, the way you write your, if you're writing, it's quite different. It's, it, goes, it goes a lot, you understand, to keep them wanting to read more and more and more. So for now, I think uh, that would be for want of time, because I believe Chamaco would want other, um, uh, would want Marvin and, and Olufumi to contribute. So that's, that's just what I have to say for now. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much, George. Okay, so for what George is saying, George is saying that if you're asked to talk about your, you know, talk about yourself, you write in the third person. You don't say, um, you don't say, okay, let's say my name is Chamaka Jonathan. I have, you don't say I, you don't use the word I. Just like when I was reading out their profiles, you see that they wrote it in the third person. That's how my profile is. Chamaka Jonathan is a public health practitioner and the founder of Marcus Concept, a um, the fashion brand which focuses on, on the production of beaded jewelries and fascinators. She has, or she describes herself as, Someone, she has done this, she has, like you use she, 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 or let's say you've talked about the first paragraph, the second paragraph, you can still say Chamaka is, Chamaka is this, Chamaka is that. Over the years, she, for most part of her life, she has been interested in community service, leadership, and, and she has been, so you're seeing, I've been using, I use the third person, she, 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 not I, I know. You use Chamaka Jonathan, they can say Chamaka is, they can say she is. So that is what, you know, we're trying to say here. Thank you so much for sharing, George. So thank you so much for sharing. George. So let's just, George, actually did justice to the question. Yeah, you did, you did justice to the question. So let's move over to the next question because of our time. Okay, so now, okay, this one talked about, tell us about yourself. Yeah, we've treated that. So the second one, it's, um, let's go straight to the administrative skills. Okay, so now this question is, I have the ability to assert ideas or opinions, knowing what to say and how to say it without damaging a relationship by causing offense. Now talking about this administrative trait, these questions will help the selection committee to identify leadership traits. Just like we said, it, we said it earlier, this leadership, this um, fellowship is for leaders people who have been doing amazing things people who have a proven track record now your responses here are going to distinguish you from the next person is going to distinguish distinguish you from the other candidates just like we said earlier this application is very competitive you have people applying from other countries so you need to know how to answer these questions now these questions here are to assess 
your leadership traits. Now, this question is, I have the ability to assert ideas or opinions, knowing what to say, how to say it, without damaging a relationship by causing offense. So Marvlin, what do you think about this question? The options are somewhat true, occasionally true, not true, very true. What do you think they're trying to find out from you if they're asking, I have the ability to assert ideas, opinions, you know, knowing what to say and how to say it without damaging um, the relationship of someone, without damaging the relationship by causing offense. So Marvin, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Tiamaka. Good to be yeah. back again. Thank so basically, you. this question, I have the ability to assert ideas or opinions, knowing what to say and how to say it without damaging a relationship by causing offense is basically to test your communication skills and your emotional intelligence, your ability to communicate with people without hurting them, probably even when you have diverse opinions from what they have. And the truth is, like I said, this yearly application is not for people who are not leaders. They expect that you're already a leader. You've already led groups of people. You have already done something and you have some kind of experience that needs to be improved upon. So what they expect you to say is very true. They don't need you to say not true. That means you are immature. If you say somewhat true, you're not really sure of yourself. If you say seldom true, that means ha, it's just on very rare occasions. And if you say occasionally true, you're also not being honest to yourself. So what they want them, what they expect from you is very true. In fact, one of the hacks someone told me about these tricky parts of the administrative skills aspect of the application is that yes, you cannot say very true to all the questions because you are human, you are imperfect but you should be able to look at yourself and be able to say very true in at least majority of the questions because they also expect that this person is not just a novice. You could be honest and say occasionally true in one or two questions or three maximum, but for majority of the questions, they expect you to say very true because they are not expecting a novice. They are not expecting someone that is unteachable. They are not expecting someone that cannot um, lead others or is not considerate or cannot communicate or is not emotionally intelligent. So they expect you to say very true. Thank you, Chair Maka. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for sharing, Marvin. Thank you so much for doing justice to that question. So let's go over to the next question. I'll be addressing this question to Fumi. So Fumi, please get ready. So this question is, is under administrative skills. And the question is, I always make sure we celebrate as a team when we meet milestones. It's still the same option, the same options, somewhat true, occasionally true, not true, very true, and seldom true. I always make sure we celebrate as a team when we meet milestones. So for me, what do you think they're trying to you know, find out by asking this particular question? Over to you for me. Okay, um, I think to a large extent, Marvin just already answered our question. Now, I, I sincerely may not be able to tell somebody that this is exactly how you should answer questions. And the funniest part is, you may actually go on the application this year and find out that the questions have changed. So, I wouldn't advise um, necessarily that you just say, oh, this is exactly what is going to come out. This is the format and all of that. But really, just like what Marvin said, what they are trying to see is who you are as a leader, right? Um, your personality, because I mean, it's it's regional leadership center. So if you are not a leader, and not truly, it's not everybody's a leader, it's, and it's not a bad thing. So people follow, and it's okay. And maybe we always have to have that. But in a question like this, really, even without being a leader, you have to be the, the normal thing. Let me use that word. The normal thing is that when there are milestones, even if maybe you were not directly involved, you should be able to celebrate. Do you understand? So you should be able to celebrate your team because as a leader, you know that if your team members win, you also win as a leader. So it's not necessarily whether you're the one that brought the idea whether or whatever it is. As long as 
you work together, whether it's one person that brought the idea, whether all of you, whatever it is, as long as it's a milestone or something worth celebrating, I mean, then it should be celebrated. So um, I would say that even down to the other parts, all the other questions, the, the, the whole administrative section, they just want to see. So essentially what I would say is think like a leader. And that's, that's what I would say to answer that question. So even you, I know some of you volunteer and in your volunteering, you don't necessarily, you're not necessarily the leader of the team. And there are also some of you that you have not necessarily had the opportunity to have a set of people that you work, um, and that, that you lead, that you direct. It doesn't still matter. Leadership is at different levels. I mean, even leading yourself, that is, that is, that is leadership. You think it's easy to lead yourself. It's not. <laughs> so even leading yourself is a very good example. What are the things that you're able to do? Like the question that was answered, something about um, offense and all of that. I think that was a question that was answered, if I'm correct. It's, it's, it says a lot about who you are in your relationship with people. So maybe somebody says something to you that on an ordinary day should have offended you, but you are able to take control of yourself. In other words, you're able to lead yourself and respond in such a way that doesn't cause the situation to escalate further and doesn't cause some fires to just burn. Of course, it's not there. Sometimes there's some people that just, you know, <laughs> you know, they can just be somehow. But one of the traits of being a leader is the ability to see from the other person's perspective and be able to step into the shoes of the other person. So personally, what I would say is that in any of these questions you are going to answer, think as if, I'm going to, what does it say now? Let's say think like the boss, but think like the leader, think like the one in front and think in not just even that. And another thing that can help you is, let's say there was somebody on the other side, how would you want that person to respond to you? So for example, let's say you were working in a team, right? And you guys um, maybe had a milestone would you want the leader of that team to celebrate you or your team, or you would just want it to slide? That would give you the answer on how to answer this. So you can put yourself in that position. Do you understand? So for example, let's say um, you, 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 there, there's a situation with somebody. How would you want it to respond to you? You know, so if you're able to do that, I know, I don't know if this uh, makes sense to somebody listening to me, but really that's what I can say. Put yourself in the position of a leader, even if you have never had to lead anybody, you have never had to tell people, okay, this is what we're going to do, this is how we're going to go about it. If you have been able to do that, fantastic. So you already have um, scenarios you can you can um, pick on to say, okay, I've done this, I've done that. But just in case you have not, I'm speaking specifically to those who have not done that. Just picture yourself as that leader and think if somebody was in that leadership position, how would you want them to act? They use that to answer your question. So I Thank really you. hope this helps. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so, so much for me. Thank you so much for me for that question. So to add to what Fumi said, okay, so this question is also trying to, you know, find um, find out your teamwork abilities, okay? How, how well are you able to work together in a team? When your teammates are doing so well, are you, are you excited or are you that person that feels bad? where that your, that your teammates, you know, is doing so well. Let's say for instance, you're in an office. <laughs> oh God, I just remember something. You're working in, a, in an office and let's say you were celebrated <clears throat> or you were made the best staff of the month. Are you going to be that particular teammate that is going to feel so bad or you're going to feel so upset that they made, that they, that that your colleague is the best staff of the month and you're not the best staff of the month, okay? I'm, I'm laughing because I'm actually talking from experience. So are you, are you that kind of um, team player that is going to feel bad that, ah, my, my, my colleague was made the best staff of the month and I'm not made the best staff of the month? Or are you going to rejoice with them? So it's trying to know how well you're, you're able to react in a team. So I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask another question, but I'll, I'll take that particular one. So this question is, of a truth, I enjoy responding to people's requests and concern. Of a truth, I enjoy responding to people's requests and concern. And the options are somewhat true, occasionally true, not true, very true, and seldom true. So this particular question, remember it is under the administrative skills. So this particular question is trying to assess your listening skills. How well are you able to listen to people? 
listen to people when they're talking. You know, we have we have active listening skills. We have, you know, good communication skills. There are some, there are some persons that you're talking to them. <laughs> they're not even listening to you. You say something, they're not even getting what you're saying. So this particular question is trying to assess your listening skills, your empathy, okay? Your emotional intelligence, your interpersonal skills. Do you feel, do you feel emotions? How do you react? You know, when people tell you things about themselves, you know, do you feel for them or you're someone that you don't even care about them? You don't even care about what they say or whatever they're telling you. So this particular question, for me, the answer for this question is very true. If, do you enjoy listening to Because as a leader, you're meant to have good communication skills. As a leader, these are some of the skills that leaders possess. They possess good listening skills. They have emotional intelligence. They're empathetic and they have good interpersonal skills. So for me, the answer to that question is very true. Now let's move over to the next question of a truth, writing reports, scheduling and working with details come easily for me. Of a truth, writing reports, scheduling and working with details comes easily for me. So George, I'm directing this question to you. What do you think they're trying to find out from asking you know, this particular question? The same option, oh. more true, of a, of a truth, writing reports, scheduling and working with details comes easily for me. What do you think you're trying to find out from this question? George, you have the floor now. All right, thank you, Jamaica. Um, basically, for me, this session um, is trying to assess your administrative skills. Um, basically, when we talk about administrative skills, it's your process. You understand how you process things, how you work, because what you are is trying to do is that you'll, you'll be bringing together um, so many persons from different backgrounds, different cultural backgrounds, different beliefs and all that. So you want to understand your kind of person. You want to understand how you work. Because when we talk about admin, we're talking about work. You, you guys be paired in teams. You have um, team works. You have projects. You work together. So they want to understand your working culture. That is what this section is trying to um, assess. There's something I always tell people, in as much as there is no right or wrong answer, that's just the truth because um, or if we said something, not everybody, or we are not all leaders, in as much as there are no right or wrong answers, but if you're applying for um, YALI, this particular, for these particular questions, there are ideal responses, there are questions, there are answers that are, sorry, there are ideal answers, there are answers that you should, that ideally should be the answer. So, he said, I enjoy writing reports, I enjoy um, following up and all that. What they're trying to find out is when they pair you guys up in a team, when you're in a team, are you this kind of person that you're in a team of maybe four or five persons or six persons and you're asked to come up with a, a project idea and you leave it up to your team members. You're like, people should be writing. After everything, we shall add data. You understand? Let's just be joining or the kind of person that, okay, what has to be done? Are we writing project? Okay, let me, um, perhaps I should write the concept note of our project. The other person should do that. You understand, like, they want to know how your, your working culture is. Are you the kind of person that shy away from work? Or are you the kind of person that embraces work? So for me, I think uh, the ideal response to that particular question should be, um, what are the options again? It should, it should answer in the affirmative. You should definitely answer in the affirmative. The answer should be, true very true or at least occasionally true but i think for me the ideal response should be very true you understand every leader because as a leader you don't have to wait for people um to follow up you should be able to um you should be able to motivate you should be able to follow up with tax so ideally the response should be very true but i think it's still safe because one thing sorry i need to put in is consistency you don't have to lie because these questions over time they are going to look at it if you begin to lie there's a point you answer something and it, it it negates or it contradicts what you, you can, whether you like it or not they are building a profile of you so for me the ideal response should be very true then at first um, occasionally true okay thank you so much thank you so much george thank you so much for sharing Okay, just to add a little to what George said. Okay, so this particular question is also trying to, um, you know, assess your your business writing skills. Okay, your project management skills, your reporting skills, your time management skills. You know, it said um, right. Thank you so much, George. Thank you to what you said. So Marvin, this question is managing people and resources is one of my strengths. Managing people and resources is one of my strengths. It's still the same option, somewhat true, occasionally true, not true, very true, and seldom true. 
pool and resources is one of my on this particular question. Okay, thank you very much, Yamaka. Thank you so much, George and Fumi, for your contribution. Yes, I'd like to um, reemphasize the point George has stated. You don't have to lie. As much as you want to answer the questions in the affirmative and get selected, Yali is keeping record of everything you put in your application. And in the virtual interview, um, as the case may be, when you're called to be talked to directly, they have a way of twisting the answers you said to be sure if you really meant them. They have a way someone could just decide to ask you a question that will annoy you and then see how you would respond from a practical um, perspective. And if you said it that you are good at managing people and emotions just to get the letter, and then they see otherwise when they are talking to you or reaching out to you, it's definitely a negation on what you said you can do. And of course, we are not saying that these are the exact questions or these are the exact answers. We are only trying to prefer solutions that could be of help to us. The questions might change over the years. We really do not know. The answers might change. But like um, George and Fumi have said, there is an ideal expectation. So for this question, managing people and resources is one of my strengths. Of course, they want to know your people management ability, your resource management ability. And ideally, it's expected that you should answer in the affirmative, yes. How, how do you say you are a leader and you cannot manage people? How do you say you are a leader and you cannot manage resources? Are you going to be a wasteful leader? Are you going to be a leader that you're just uh, bearing the title and then you cannot even um, lead your followers? You're not even showing the right kind of example for people to follow you. So that is a very important question. And the answer should be in the affirmative. If it's not very true, it should be occasionally true. And of course, yes, thank you, Kim. Okay, thank you so much, Marvlin. Thank you, Marvlin, for sharing. Okay, so I, I hope we got, <clears throat> we got what Marvlin was saying. Okay, to add to that particular response from Marvlin, managing people are and and resources is one of my strengths. This particular question is also trying to assess your management skills. Skills. How do you manage people? Let's say you're in to lead uh, or a lot of people. How do you manage them? Are you able to manage these guys? What's wrong in your team? How are you able to resolve? those issues it's also trying to you know assess your management skills and your conflict resolution skills thank you so much for sharing marvelin um, um so the next question this evening for me so for me the next question is i am good following up on tasks and issues concerning people i am good on following up on tasks and issues concerning find out from this particular Say that again. Say that I am good what? Okay, I am good at following up on tasks and issues concerning people. I'm good at following up on tasks and issues concerning people. Well, as a leader, that's yeah. that's that is definitely something you need to um, yeah. Leadership so, you. Yeah. Just they're just really trying to see. Um, your let's say your capacity now really yeah. and the interesting part is just to note please there are some of these questions that it will ask you to give examples so i i, I want to also clarify that because it hasn't been yeah. mentioned some of the questions are not yeah. just yes i agree you mentioned yeah i remember one of the um questions that i answered the question was about something something offense that has there been a situation where maybe somebody around you and you had to sort it out. I had to give a very, very clear example. So in this case, that to say um, you are someone who's good at doing this, you have to have examples to give. So really, and as a leader, if, if you are not, uh, what's the word now? Is it being proactive, being able to take action? Because sometimes that's where people make the mistakes, mistake rather, you know, as a leader, you're someone who steps out to take action. You don't need to be told what to do. You don't need to be prodded by yourself. You think you are able to say, okay, 
we need to do this, we need to do that. And you can follow up on people to say, okay, um, okay, maybe you told them, maybe you said, oh, we were supposed to achieve a particular goal. You don't wait for them to come back to you first to tell you that, okay, um, this was done, this wasn't done. You are the one that was, okay, this stuff we're supposed to do, where are you on it? That, that's what a leader does. So you need to have examples on that and really, that's it. Okay, thank you so much for sharing for me. Thank you so much. So um, let me move on. To, let me move on to the next question. Okay. So the next question is: At an outdoor program, where are you most likely to be found? At an outdoor program, where are you most likely to be found? Is it working as the master of ceremony or overseeing all operations to ensure everything to plan? Please mute yourselves. Okay, so can we still hear me? I had to mute. I had to mute him. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, fine. So let me just let's be quick. We'll soon be done. Okay. So the next question is: As an outdoor program, where are you mostly like? Where are you most likely to be found? Is it working as the master of ceremony, overseeing all operations to ensure everything goes to plan? George, this question is for you. Get ready, George. Is it working as an usher? Is it seated at the high table as the guest speaker? So, George, what's the answer to this question? What do you think? <laughs> All right. Um, thank you, Chemaka. You know, it's just this this particular question just yeah. reiterates um, the fact that um, reiterates what uh, Marvin, myself, Marvin, and Lunifu may have stated. Okay. Sincerely, there are no I, there are no right or wrong questions. Okay. It's and yali, you see, you can't you can't actually cheat yali. That's just the truth. Um, these questions are carefully curated by professionals. You understand, like yeah. persons in the HR and all that to actually detects lies and all that. So to answer this question, in all honesty, there, for me, there is no right answer for this. There's no particular right answer. Why I say there's no particular right or wrong answer, it's someone can decide to choose working as the master of ceremony. The other person can say overseeing all operations. You know, what they're trying to see is one, to understand the kind of qualities, your most dominant qualities, and to see if what you've been asking is true. Okay, let's take for instance, you answer um, in the affirmative for working as the master of ceremony. What it means that, okay, you probably, perhaps you have great public speaking skills. You understand? You're the kind of person that likes to talk. You have very outstanding communication skills. That doesn't mean that whoever it is that is choosing, um, overseeing all operations to ensure everything goes well. What he's trying to say is that that, person, that particular person has outstanding or very good organizational skills. The person is an organizer. Now, it still says there was something older for me said where well, they're going to ask you to write or give an example. This particular question is, is like, a, is a, I, I would like to say that and put it as a trap because if you choose a master of ceremony and you're giving an example because for every section i think for every section has an essay the administrative skills you give you write an exit now you're choosing that uh, you'll be speaking as a master of ceremony now in your example you're writing you're writing something else you see it's wrong so in this particular question if you're choosing i'll most likely be uh as a master of ceremony, giving speech, then whatever essay you're going to write should highlight your public speaking skills. You should give an example where you talked in a, um, in an organization. Always remember to quantify and qualify. You said um, you gave a speech um, for over 200 persons in attendance. You understand? So this particular question, I would say there is no ideal question. There is no ideal answer. Just answer what appeals, what is the closest to you. Then make sure in writing, um, whenever whatever example you're citing, you highlight that particular skill that it's public speaking. Because what they want to find out from this particular question is they want to know if you're a great public speaker or you have more of organization skills or you're effecting in developing plans. Because one thing is certain um, at the regional um, center, not one person is not going to do everything. In the events, there are people that will have to handle the mic. There are still persons that will have to do the ushering work. There are still persons that are going to organize the processes and all that. But just be true to your um, to your to your responses. Be sincere. Be consistent, and that is it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for sharing, George. Okay, so just like George said, this particular question, there is no wrong or right answer. 
Okay, just like they said, the first um, option is working as the master of ceremony. So if you're working as the master of ceremony, it shows that ah, you can, you, you're a good speaker, you're a good public speaker. If you say oh, overseeing all operations to ensure everything goes according to plan, you have good planning skills, good organizational skills. If you say working as an usher, it's still good. Ushers are making sure that everything is put in place in, you know, in an event. If you still say seated at the high table as the guest speaker, that's still amazing because um, for you to be seated there as the guest speaker, that means you must, you're, you're doing so well and you still have good communication skills. So you need to be very sincere. Whenever you're applying for all this, I would, I would advise you not to lie. <laughs> if it's me, I myself, I, I love planning a lot. I, I would definitely choose B, overseeing all operations to ensure everything goes according to plan because I know that I have strong, I have, you know, I have, a, I have strength there and I've done a lot you know, in this, in this area. So, and again, just like Fumi and George said, you'll be told to tell a story and that's the next question I'm going to ask. So when, when you're answering this question, be very sincere. And so that um, when you're telling that story, it's going to be in line with what you chose earlier. So now the next, the next question is, provide an example that will support the choices selected under administrative skills. Now, this is an essay. And again, you know, these essays, they, they, they normally have a word limit. You could see 200 words, you could see 250 words. I would advise you not to exceed those words. Whenever you have an application, please endeavor to, you know, endeavor to hit to the, the limits. If they say 200 words, please write 200. If they say 250, please write 250 words. I, will, I want you to pay attention to the word limit. So this particular question is an essay. Now this essay it has, is going to be in line with all these things you said earlier on. So this is where I'm going to catch you. If you lie, they will catch you. If you say the truth, they will catch you. So Marvlin, um, I want you to talk about this part. Provide an example that will support the choices selected under administrative skills. Just, just, just tell us how to um, answer this particular question, how the essay can be written. So Marvlin, you have the floor. Are you still with us, Marvlin? Yes, thank you very much. I think my network got um, bad at some point. So yes, first and foremost, just like um, all the speakers have said, Amaka, Fumi, George, be very sensitive about the word limit. If they tell you 100 words, please make it 100 words. If they tell you 200 words, make it 200 words. And then you have to calculate it maybe according to sentences. So you know maybe you want to do 100 words, 10 sentences of 10 words or however, and then you count your words before you submit. That's the best part of it. Then the second part is explaining your essay in relation to the answer you have chosen. So for instance, let's say for number seven, um, for that particular question about the outdoor program and where you're most likely to be found. If you're saying the working at master of ceremony, you should definitely say in your essay, a scenario of which um, you had an event. Please give all the details, quantify it, just as we've been emphasizing. There was an event, um, Marvlin hosted, which had about 200 guests in attendance and ABC, this is what happened. With the master of ceremony. And then you talk about the response or how people responded to it. Were you able to carry out your duties as expected? Was there an ovation at the end of the day? Did they commend you? Did the organizers commend you? Or were you the organizer? Why were you the master of ceremony? Was it was it a volunteer thing, or you were selected because of that your strength, which is the public speaking skill, or let's say you are saying overseeing all the pressure to ensure everything goes according to plan. You're also going to set an instance. For instance, okay, there was this project, and then what? How did you follow it up to ensure that uh, everything went according to plan? Maybe you could say you called your teammate. Maybe you could say you ensured that they had meetings. Maybe you could say, okay, on the day of the event, you showed up earlier at the um, center for the event, and this is what you did, this is what you did to make sure that everyone was there. You also talk about, let's say, in an event, because they are also thinking, the Yali people are thinking, they are trying to see how um, sincere you can be and how good you are in terms of what you're saying you are good in. So in the um, organizational skills, you could talk about that, oh, there was 
one of the teammates who had an issue and was not able to show up on time and then you carried out that person's responsibility it's still part of leadership to take up responsibilities that aren't for you standing in the gap to feel it and ensure that everything goes according to plan so if you're going to select the working as an usher pal, your essay should be something in the lines of okay for this particular event or project um they were in need of ushers definitely you would need to quantify it that is the quantifying of that um project that will determine the the state of your ushering so if it's a large event you definitely know that in your essay you are going to say you are not the only usher probably you led the team of usher or something but if it's a small event or maybe just a meeting of 10 15 people or 100 and something people you could now say, okay, maybe your you and your friends were ushers, and this is what you that is what you did. You mentioned that people had the uniforms and the event ran smoothly. You guys sorted out the logistics, you made sure people were served, people were in their seats, you know. Whatever you are writing in your essay has to be well planned, well it's well felt out. And even if you want to choose the option of um seated at the high table as the guest speaker, you will also have to explain that in your essay in a way that shows responsibility as a leader. So why were you the guest speaker? Okay, that means you have depth on this particular subject area. You come up practical. Okay, I was the guest speaker speaking on maybe women and children's health, maybe whatever, whatever. You name the project, talk about the time and the date, talk about the people that were involved in it, talk about probably the location, um, the aim of the project, what you spoke on, the, the questions people asked you. All of these things have to be in the word count. So you don't write too much, you don't lie, and you try to also say everything you want to say in that before you submit that answer. Can you hear me? Yes, we okay, can hear you, you Marlene. Okay, we can you. hear you, Marlene. Thank you so much. OK, so I see so many questions um, going on in the chat um, box. Don't worry, we'll attend to ask our questions when we are done, OK? I'm trying to be fast so we could finish before 9 PM. So we'll answer our questions, OK? So we'll do that. I can see some hands. As, um, some people raise their hands to we'll address that. So thank you so much for sharing, Marvlin. So Marvlin talked about the essay part, and she did justice to that, OK? Thank you so much. So um, let me move over to the interpersonal skills. So I'll be directing this question to Fumi. Fumi, please get ready. So these interpersonal skills um, will help the selection committee to identify your current potential traits, leadership traits, just like the other sections addressed. So, okay. So the, this particular question is, I am completely at ease when a conversation shifts to the topic of feelings. Fumi, are you here? Like Femi has left. Yes, yes, I am. <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> she know why I'm laughing <laughs> because okay. this reminds me of how these yeah. days on social media, yeah. people's fuses seem to be very short. You know, you know, sometimes um, it, it's almost as if people cannot bear to hear a different, like a different opinion, especially now that we're in political season, elections. Yeah. You see. So really, what this is trying to find out is your tolerance level, because as a leader, you have to understand that um, there are people from different backgrounds as you are, right? Everybody is uniquely different, whether they are from your, even if even if you are from maybe the same states, their family background makes them different, which means that it, it is. Um, <laughs> it means that they are going to think differently. So I think this person just wants to know your tolerance level. And the truth about it is you have to help yourself. And if you're someone that if somebody says something to you that you think is um you don't you don't agree, of course, you, I'm not nobody saying that you must agree to everything everybody says. Of course not, it's not that. But you must be able as a leader to expand yourself in such a way that you are open to other experiences, you are open to, it's like seeing, seeing from the other person's point of view, that's where the word comes from, point of view. So you're trying to put yourself in the other shoes. Okay, I may not agree, but I understand your point and I respect your point. So really that question just wants to know how much you're tolerant of other people and how much you respect.
uh, respect other people's opinions. So much um, for me. For me, I also want to ask you the next question. Thank you so much. So this next question is, I often do not know when to lead and when to allow others to lead. For me, I often do not often. know when to allow others to lead. So the options are occasionally true, very true, seldom true, somewhat true, and strongly not true. So what do you think they're trying to find out from this? Well, it's, I mean, it's a leadership problem. So they're really trying to find out if you are able to take initiative because um, how, how do I put this? Not just even taking initiative, more like because sometimes as a leader, there is that temptation to be bossy. Leadership and being the boss are two different things, right? And you need to be able to, um, what's the word now? Differentiate when, when, when that is needed. So for example, there are situations as a leader where you know that you have to take the lead and do something, do you understand? And there are also circumstances where, for example, maybe as a leader, you have certain strengths and your members, or maybe you have certain weaknesses and a member of your team or the person you are leading has a particular strength, which kind of, you know, aids your own weakness. You must be humble enough as a leader to understand that, okay, you know what? I don't have strength in this area, <clears throat> you know, but this person that works with me has strength in this particular area. And you can be free enough, I mean, let's say be willing enough to, to let it go to say, okay, you know what, can you handle this without feeling threatened? That's that's the word. So for me, if I were to say, um, I, if I were to answer this question, personally, this is me speaking for myself, I would actually just say strongly not true. I always know, I, I know how to, I know myself. I know, I have a good grasp of who I am as a person. Any other person here may give that, maybe the other speakers may have something they want to say, but for me, if I were to answer this question, I would say um, um, strongly not true, meaning that I know when to lead and I know when to allow others to lead without feeling threatened about my goal or whatever. Thank you so much for sharing for me. So, thank you so much. So, let's... um move i'll be addressing this next question to george so george the question is when i get irritated by other people's habits i do not avoid telling them about it when i get irritated about other people's habits i do not avoid telling people about it the options are always as much as possible rarely and occasionally so george what do you think they're trying to find out and what do you think is the best answer to this question george over to you all right, thank you, Chimaka. Um, This is the interpersonal skills section. Basically, when I talk about interpersonal skills, um, Yali is trying to understand how you relate with people. Just like I mentioned earlier, you'll be in a room with so many persons, you understand, from different cultural backgrounds, different ideas, different belief systems and all that. So they want to understand how you interact with people. Are you the kind of person that will easily pick up fights or... You understand, you always want to be at the forefront. You don't understand that there are other leaders. So for this particular question, he said, um, when I get irritated by other people's habits, I do not avoid telling them, right? I don't avoid yeah. telling them about it. So what they're trying to find out, see, whether you like it or not, as long as there is human interaction, there is bound to be conflict. And actually, conflict is good. Conflict leads to better understanding. You understand, but the but the the emphasis is on conflict resolution. How do you handle conflict? You have to understand this. You'll be working with you're working in teams. You want your opinion. Someone else will have their opinion. You understand? So there is bound to be misinterpretations, misunderstandings. There is bound to be conflict. And Yali knows that, but they want to understand how you respond to this conflict. How do you interact? Are you the kind of person that when you get angry, you just zone out. You say, I'm not doing it again. For this year, everybody should just, I'm not doing it. You should be doing your own. You understand that kind of thing? Or you the kind of person that when you're angry. So for me, I think the ideal response for me, and what I usually do is when someone, uh, what's the word, what's the word they use? When someone does something I don't like. Sorry? Hello? So they use the word 
You're asking for the word. Okay. So yeah, right? okay. Yeah, when I get irritated, I talk to you about it. You understand? You want to understand your mm-hmm. your human interaction, your empathy. For me, as a lead, the belief for every and which I think it's ideal for every leader in every interaction or in every group, just like I said, there's bound to be conflict. So once you get interrupted, it's advisable you talk to the person, you call them, you don't you, you don't have to necessarily call the person out in the group. When everything you could just, you know, no problem, you keep quiet. When everything is out, just call the person by the corner. This was what actually what I was thinking. But the way you said it wasn't how I wanted it. This is not cool. This is just it. let's just settle this thing and everything dies up. You understand? So they don't want you to be the kind of person that will come to Yali and you're busting bottles or you're keeping malice in Yali, you're not talking to somebody or you're beefing. So for me, I think the response should be strongly true. I don't know if there is a strongly so true there. Are always, as much as possible, rarely, occasionally. For me, it's um, always, always. always. Yeah. I try, as a leader, you just have to make sure that you keep the communication open. It's very important. You keep the communication, no matter how difficult it is, because these difficult conversations lead to better understanding. So for me, I would say the ideal response should be always. Thank you so much for sharing, George. Thank you so much. This is exactly me. <laughs> Sometimes some of my friends are like, oh, they'll be like, you know, when I was in school, then my friends would be like, ah, what thing I like about Tamaka is whenever you offend her, she would, she would like she would just you know call you one side and just calmly tell you her mind okay yeah i think even recently <laughs> you know i was speaking to a friend and i just you know expressed myself i was like ah i don't know i didn't like this thing you did i didn't i didn't like that i didn't like that and i told her that one thing about me so one thing that one thing with leaders is leaders say their mind you don't keep malice whenever someone gets you upset you just come out just talk to the person calmly about it okay there's no need keeping things in mind or keeping malice so one thing with me is if someone gets me upset i talk to you about it okay so because i don't like quarreling or having issues so that's a that's a trait of a leader so the next question i emphasize my own point of view at the expense of others I, I emphasize my own point of view at the expense of others. Marvin, what do you think about this question? We're trying to round up. Is Marvin still here with us? Can we hear me? Can you guys hear me? Quickly, quickly. I have yes, a message about network. Yes, I'm here. I guess your network is back. Marvin, can you hear me? Is yes, I can hear you. I can hear you I'm back. My network is kind of bad. Oh, I'm so sorry. Okay. So you asked the question. Um, that I yeah. I emphasize my opinion at the expense of others. Yes. So really, so, let's meet ourselves. Let's meet ourselves so that we don't have the echo. Okay. I'm okay. trying to round up, guys, so we could ask okay. our Yes, I think it's clear now. So, when you say I, I like to give my opinion, it's fine. As a leader, you should be able to give your opinions. But then there's a club in that at the expense of others. No, that's not leadership. Leadership doesn't um, do things to favor the leader at the expense of others. Leadership tends to always put both the followers and the leaders on the the followers and the leaders. Because as a leader, you're not supposed to put your opinions first at the expense of others. So you should say no, it's wrong. If you're actually someone that keeps your opinions and even ignores the opinions of others or does things just in your favor and of others, you're not a good leader. So definitely that should be the negative. Thank you so much. So for me, I'll be asking you the next question. The next question is I feel threatened when someone criticizes me. So what's the answer? The answer is the question, sorry, the options are true, false sometimes. For me, I hear I feel threatened when someone criticizes me. Um, you'll never definitely please anybody and sometimes criticism is good because you know sometimes in our head we have this perfect image of ourselves so i think that question just wants to know how honest you are with yourself but sometimes people tend to lie to themselves a lot but you have to be honest enough with yourself so 
Um, personally, for to answer that question, which is me as a person, is I, I I mean it's false because I don't I don't feel threatened at all. In fact, I I like to get that criticism because for me, I don't just see it as an attack on my person. I see it as okay something I could look at and see whether it is true, and if it's something that is true, especially maybe if it's something like two or three or four people are saying it, then you know that okay. This is something I need to work on. So as a leader, you should be somebody that uh, um, should be open to that. So really, I think that's just about being honest with yourself enough you know, to say, okay, and to answer that question, <laughs> your answer should be definitely uh, false, but I can answer that for you. That's me answering that question for myself. Thank you so much for me. So for me, I also want to ask one more question. Just quickly, in a few minutes, I can interpret the mood, the mood of others when I communicate with them. What do you think they're trying to find out? I can interpret the mood of... Well, one of the qualities of leadership is empathy, meaning um, you being able to understand and, and assess people. You understand? Because sometimes people may not say anything, but if you are... if you, if, I think we call it um, emotional intelligence, that's the word. So I think maybe that person is trying to assess your emotional intelligence to to really be able to see how as a leader you are able to understand people and go beyond the outward what's the word now facade and say okay this is exactly what it is of course nobody's saying that um you should be excellent at it so maybe in such a case your answer can be sometimes because i mean it's not every time that you get to do that so it's just really about empathy and emotional intelligence really. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for sharing for me. So now we're in the last question for tonight for this um, fellowship. Okay, should I say this? Is this the last? Okay, no, I think there's one other question that's remaining. Okay, so um, George, I'll be asking this question. So this is the essay part because after each session, there will be an essay for you to explain what you chose, for you to explain the options you chose. So this particular question is provide an example that will support the choices selected on that interpersonal skills. So George, please, can you take us on that? After this question, then the next question will be why you should get selected. That's the motivation, why you should get selected. So that will be our last question for tonight. So George, I just want you to take us on this particular question, how to write the essay on um, supporting the choices selected under interpersonal skills. Then I'll direct the next question of why you should select or why you should be selected, I will direct it to Marvlin. Okay, so George, please, you have the floor now. All right, thank you, <clears throat> thank you, Chimaka. Uh, for want of time, I would like to kill two birds with one stone. I saw a particular question from someone mm -hmm. where the person asked about the essay questions. Um, asked, he was asking if in writing our uh, essay for each of these um, administrative and interpersonal um, questions, whether we should factoring the response of each question the answer is no, no yeah. so what they're trying to do just like I, I mentioned earlier as well as i think Ma uh, marvin and olufumi also said so for each section for the interpret let's take for instance this interpersonal um section if you notice the kind of questions they've been asking you are questions related with interaction with people your interaction. Are you going to get angry if you're discussing with someone? Do you pay attention to their non-behavioral cues, you know, non-verbal communication and all that? So if you're answering your answer, if you're giving your answers, your aces should be um, cumulatively on the subject matter. For instance, interpersonal skill. If you're writing an essay on your interpersonal skill section, you should give an example of how you've interacted with someone, perhaps how you've had a conflict with someone and how you resolved it. You understand? So with that example, now you're able to cover up most of the questions about um, paying attention, communicating. Let's take, for instance, now interpersonal skills. You might want to give, for me as an example, as a business person, now, I might want to give an example of perhaps when I did a job for a client and she didn't like it and she was like, she don't like this stuff. Then I'll be like, okay, I had to employ my communicative or interpersonal skills by asking her what were the things she wanted. Then after enumerating the qualities or um, the things you were looking to get, I carefully implemented um, everything she had um, she had described. Then I got back to her, then she gave me a feedback and she was excited. 
Now, this is just me giving a summary. What I'm trying to th- um, tell them here is that I didn't, I didn't get angry, or I'm not, I, I didn't, I didn't take rejection for, for I didn't negate it. You know, you worked with someone, the person didn't like what you did. I went further to ask, okay, how would you like us to get this thing done? She gave me the feedback. I took the feedback. I worked on the feedback. This is now you explain to them that you have great reasoning skills. You have great list, um, listening skills. You pay attention. Then you worked on it. You went back to the person, gave it to the person. The person liked it and case settled. Now for your administrative skills, you might want to give an example of where you've worked with people. Administrative skills are basically, you remember the questions they asked are basically, your work, how you work with a group of people. So the best bet is always to give an example of how you worked in a team. Your role in that team, don't forget, you have to emphasize your role. So if you're choosing that you have good public skills in those questions, you should have to give an example of in that team, were you the kind of person that was speaking or your kind of person that was on, on organizing things or I don't understand. So for these cases, for each of the sections, to break it down, interpersonal skills, you give an example of how you worked with someone, you die a conflict, how were you able to resolve conflict? How were you able to pay attention to what people were saying? For administrative skills, you give an example of how you worked with a team, your role in that team and the results people achieved. So that is it. Okay. Thank you so much, George. Thank you so much. Can you hear me, George? Yes, I can hear you, Chemaka. Thank you so much for sharing. So now the last question, I'll be directing it to Marvin. Marvin, the question is, um, why should we select you? That's the motivation part. What do you intend to do with this opportunity? So Marvin, just quickly tell us um, about that. Should it be more than, I think, 200 characters or so? Yeah. Yes, thank you so much, Chemaka. So for the motivation is very important. Not more than 200 characters. All you need to do is... the words. No more 200 than 200 words. Words. Sorry. Words. Sorry. words. Yeah, 200 words. Not yes. Forgive me. So what you need to do there is just make a pitch. In that pitch, your motivation has to have why you should be selected, why you selected a particular track you chose, and what you're going to do with this opportunity if you are selected. So it's for, for the business people, you have to tell them what you're doing currently, if you're volunteering, why you want to apply for the program or what you heard about it. Do you want to get mentors? Do you want to get exposure to more um, high-ranking business people who could teach you some skills? What are the expectations of the program? And then what are you bringing to the table? What are the skills that Yali can also benefit from you and explore if they put you in the program? If you're in the civic leadership aspect of it, definitely, definitely, you have to give your best shot. So tell them about your experience. You don't need to lie. Remember the things that you can remember in the application. Tell them about what you've done so far, how that has been able to impact lives. Remember, you have to use statistics. You have to use things that they can relate to. And then when you're done, you tell them, for me, one of the things I do when they ask me what I intend to do, obviously, I'll talk about the mentoring parts that I want to get mentorship um, through people who have already been there so that the journey could be easier. You know, you structure the English properly. You know, I also want to talk about how I would love to network with other young leaders because what the Yali Fellowship does is brings together leaders from all across Africa or this West Africa Ghana cohort. It brings together leaders from all across West Africa. So I would um network with them, learn from them and see how I can improve them, they can improve me. You highlight the skills you're bringing to the table. If you're in the public policy aspect, definitely you need to tell your story and then relate that story to what you're passionate about and the problem you're trying to solve. Let you know why that issue you're trying to solve is important and how that policy you're bringing to the table is important. Let them know why you want to be part of the training and what you're coming to do. Remember, you have to be somebody that people can work with. You have to be somebody that people can interact with. You have to be somebody that people can also learn from. So that's just basically what your motivation is. It should be a pitch. It should not be full of lies, but it should be touching, it should be captivating. Most importantly, it should be what you can remember because they will ask you. So look for a tone on paper when you are writing your application or with any part of the application and jot down the answers if you can see it. Probably when you look at the questions, you could screenshot or you could save them and then you would answer set and then read through it with the with the mind of your interviewer or the person looking at your application and see if I was this person with my application, would I select myself? Thank you so much for listening.
Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Marvin. Thank you so much, Marvin. And to add to, to what Marvin said, so after answering, um, after, you know, answer the particular question, also tell them what you intend to do with this particular opportunity, okay? Just like mine, you know, during mine, I talked about after saying everything, I want to improve myself, I want to network, to improve my professional experience, you know, my career, collaborate with other persons across Africa. Um, I also added, I would, I would, I would, you know, organize trainings, I will still impact people in my country, you know, with the skills and with the knowledge acquired. I said I was going to keep on doing trainings, okay? I'll keep on doing trainings, I'll keep on training people on, you know, my skills, on the skills that I have. And I've been doing that over the years, I've been training persons, I've been training people with my entrepreneurial skills, and I've been doing that for free. That was what I feel in my application, I was going to impact that knowledge. So after answering that, still tell them what you want to do, with that knowledge, okay? Thank you so much, guys. Thank you, everyone. I hope I hope we learned a lot this, this night. I want to say a very big thank you, especially to our amazing speakers, Marvelyn. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, George. Thank you so much, Fumi. Thank you so much, you guys. But before we end this meeting, I want to, you know, answer our questions. Some persons have been raising their hands since. Bolu, Bolu, your hand is up. Your first, please go first and ask your question. Then, Ruth, you could go ahead and ask. Polu, you have the floor now. Let's be fast. So, before 9 10, you should be done. Bolu, go ahead. Bolu, unmute yourself and ask your question. Okay. Hi, Bolu. I'm excited to hear your voice. Oh, yes. Thank you. Yeah. I've been very hungry. I know what's happening now. Oh, sorry about that, Bolu. Sorry. I think it would be nice to have um, online refreshments when we're having such kind of event. But meanwhile, <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you, so, <laughs> thank, you so, thank you so much for hosting this. Uh, it's, a, it's a way to go. And um, I do hope that a whole lot of persons um, have taken, um, I've actually acquired one or two things from your inputs. Um, please. Is, it, is there a possibility for someone uh, who doesn't really have any story to tell to apply? Someone like me, I have not been in any, I've not been in any impact-driven projects. I've not participated in anything. And I want to be part of this uh, Yali RSC fellowship. How yeah. can I apply? Judge. How do I Judge, tell my story? I'm hearing you. Because yeah, I can hear you. All right. So can I ask thank you. All right. Thank you, Bolu. Thank you, Chamaka. In all honesty, I think yeah. everyone has a story. Hello? Go ahead. Yeah. In all honesty, I think everyone has a story. We're not withstanding. Um, I don't I I do not know the circumstances behind you saying you don't have an experience um per se. Yali basically as much as Yali seeks um for a track record, you understand. Um they still they still accommodate press to be honest, there are students, there are students that get into Yali. You understand? It all it all boils down. There was something um I think either Marvin or Lufumi said. It all boils down to how you tell your story. And I said the same. It's not. Hello, George. Can I, can you guys hear George? I can't hear anything. No, I can't hear him. I can't hear him. I think it's having network issues. Chamaka, you yes. can be talking now while I'm waiting for you. Sorry, it was my network. I, really I don't know if you okay, can hear so me. He's back. He's back, guys. He's back. So I'm right, sorry about that. It was, it was my next one. So it all comes down to how you tell your story. But now we stand it, I would have loved to get more details. But afterwards, after now, you might want to contact me personally. But for want of time, I'm going to say two things. There's always a story to tell, no matter the experiences. For the fact that you're even listening to this program, um, to this um, session, you, there's a way you can still tell it. That makes sense. You, start, you, just, you just need to be convinced. They need to have the willpower. And second. I will say it's still okay not to apply now. The first time I came in contact with Yali, 
I looked at the eligibility um, criteria. I looked at, in all honesty, for most of the parts, 99% of um, the eligibility, or even 99.9, I had the, I was eligible. But at that point, I didn't have the time or the, I just felt like I wasn't really at liberty to do that. Do you know what I did? I left the application. Then I started consciously even working on other things. I said, okay, these are the things I needed to do. I started focusing because I knew I wanted to do the um, business um, and entrepreneurship track. I started focusing more on my business and entrepreneurship work. You understand? Then the following year, I was so confident. So, Mr. Bolu, it's okay if you don't want, if you don't apply now, you feel like you don't have the sufficient experience. This an application is an upper hand. You've learned a lot already from this application. You already have an edge. You understand? Consciously start working. You might want to join a volunteer group now. You understand? I even feel like it's going to give you an advantage. You want to join a volunteer group now. Constantly and gradually, intentionally start doing things. Little by little, little by little. And by the time the application for the next cohort is announced, you'll find out that you've actually built, I guess, you've actually built an experience and you, you will leverage on the information you've gotten here and the little work you've done. So that is my own contribution. Thank you so much Thank for you, sharing. George. Thank you, George. But well, please, George, can I ask a, one more question, please? Can you okay. recommend maybe one or two volunteering hubs I can join? There are lots of volunteering um, opportunities. I'm a member of Rootrack. Rootrack is worldwide. It's universal. I'm going to recommend the ones I know that are not um, that are not location um, that, will, that that don't have hindrances for location. That wherever you are, you always get Rootrack is one. Um, there is. Um, I'm also a member of Jan Junior, Junior Achievement Nigeria. Junior Achievement Nigeria is a member of the Junior Achievement Worldwide. It's the oldest um, non-governmental organization that focuses. It's a network of organizations that are uh, dedicated to empowering students on financial literacy, work readiness, and employability. That's Jan. Um, there's still UN volunteers. Um, I've mentioned there is um, there's Yali Network. You can join the Yali Network in your state. You understand? There's Yali Network. The Yali Network is even a very good one. You host projects. And the good thing with Yali Network is it exposes you to more because a whole lot of volunteer groups partner with Yali Networks in their states. Teach for Africa. You still see um, a whole lot of indigenous um, um, organizations or come to partner with Yali. So that way you'll be exposed to even more. So I think you could just start with some of these ones I mentioned, particularly Yali Network, Rio and Rotra, Junior Achievement, then see where it goes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I really appreciate. It. I even I think I saw their poster song. I think they are there's a national summit coming up. Can I yeah, be part is. of the national summit? If for want of time, I think you might want to reach out to me because it's becoming very personal now. So that okay, because I think okay. uh, we're working on a time thank you, thank you. now. Yeah. yeah. So you. you might want to reach out to thank me so that we'll take it out from there. All right, George. Thank you. Please share your email address, please. Thank you. Thank you so much, George. Thank you so much, George. So, um, Kings, I hope George answered your questions. Okay, so let's move on to the next person. So, Ruth, oh, there are plenty of hands up here. Ruth, please ask your question first so we could attend to other persons. Ruth, you have the floor now. Please unmute yourself. Okay, good evening. Sorry, good evening. Good evening, Hi, everyone. Ruth. Ambassador Ruth, guys. This is Ambassador Ruth. <laughs> She is my fellow, a fellow ambassador. <laughs> I'm so excited to hear you. Ambassador, you're welcome. My fellow ambassador. Thank, thank you very much. Um, thank you, Chiamaka, George, Marvin. Um, you see, Olushola, sorry if I didn't really get the name right. Apologies. Okay, first of all, I want to say thank you so much. One thing I have, I have a confession to make. I'm usually really scared of applications. Like whenever I see any yearly applications or so, trust me, I'm just going out of that page and you won't see me going close to that page again. But with um, these two hours of my time, I can say that it's, I'm good to go throughout the next week because I really learned a lot. And you guys made it so easy. That why the training was, the session was going on, I actually started reflecting on things that I have been doing that made me overqualified for the application this year. So um, my question, can you hear me, please? Yes, I can hear you, Ruth. We can hear you. Go ahead. Okay, okay. My question, I have something regarding this a Master of Events by the MC Master of Ceremony and Organizer. When one is qualified, like when one does books, for, for instance, for me now, there are some times where um, 
uh, the master of ceremony, there are sometimes you are the chief organizer of some events. So when I write in our application regarding this, how are we going to group of them so that we can be able to um, choose one and the other one is not suffering as regarding our choices. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so you're trying to find out the particular one you would go for or the particular one you use while applying, right? Yes, because I actually do both. There's sometimes I'm being called to um, speak in events. There's sometimes I'm the one hosting the events. So I'm the one doing the, back, the background, okay. running around and all. Okay, so I would advise you, you use the particular one that you've done so much things on. I would advise you, you use the particular one you've done, like you have a proven track record on, okay? Just like I said, um, I know I, I do things in the civic space, I do things in the NGO space, and I do things, I'm also an entrepreneur, okay? But when I was doing my application, I, I had to just use one. I had all my stories, everything was tailored to one part because I can't be telling different kind of stories. You have to um, tailor your application in one area. So I think you should go for the one you, you have more achievements in, the one you've done so much things on, okay? So that's the one I would advise you go for. So Marvlin, do you have anything to say? Are you here? Yeah, I think you've said it all already. Just like me, I have a lot and then I also do a lot of research. But because of what I wanted to do, I was receiving it as a I kind of structured my application for everything I do. So as an individual person, I picked um, the, the organizational part because I knew that for every outreach, for everything I want to do, Yes, I could hold them. And yes, I could anchor things. But so that really qualifies you for the track you're selecting. You know, if you're selecting the business aspects part, that the one, one of organization will favor you more because as a business person, yes, you reach out to clients, but will you really hold the mic in the business aspect of the, what you are going for? But as a public policy person, of course, you'd love to hold the mic. You'd love to get the good. I think it's basically what you are applying for that would determine the choice of your answer. So, Everything should be calculated. You don't say one thing and then you mean another. Because even when these um, applications are looked at, and probably you are at the second stage of the application, which is the virtual interview, you shouldn't be contradicting yourself. So that's it. Look for the one you have most experience in a track record, just like some of us. Okay, so I think um, the questions are much. So I think I will just ask one more question. Maybe the remaining persons, please send me a mail. I'm going to drop my contacts here. So you could ask me personally or you send me a mail because time is time is no longer on our side. This is 915. So I'll be I'll be dropping my mail and my phone number. You could reach out to me on WhatsApp. I promise to answer all of us. So um, um who would I ask? Sure, Maka, please, I need your account number. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll send it to you privately. <laughs> Helen, Helen, please go ahead and ask your question. Sunday, don't worry, I'll attend to you. Don't worry, we'll talk. Helen, just go ahead and unmute yourself and talk. Please, I'm going to share my number now, guys. Please, please go ahead. All right, thank you so much. Um, thank you so much for um this opportunity for the speakers i really um appreciate this opportunity so hope you can hear me everybody thank you hope you can hear me yes we can all right so thank you very much so um having listened to all the speakers and um well detailed explanations regarding the aces i still want to understand if, um a kind of how can someone really actually know if he or she would like to go to that um, public policy and the civic leader. because I was listening to Miss um, Olufumi um, Olawson uh, and she was um, trying to say something about um, her experience in the um, civic engagement um, sector and still went ahead to apply for politics and then I discovered that okay I'm actually um, end up in that public policy sector because I I have um, a future plan of going towards that area, but I I have discovered that I have done more of things in civic um, engagement, which I, I have been applying severally for this year honestly, and I discovered maybe that is why I have not been getting a good response from it. So, is there any, any kind of um, statement do you make for someone to just um, identify the difference between these two? Because it's, for me, it's similar. Like you're, you're doing a whole lot of things, and what you you're doing is just for you to ensure that you are giving a good 
a good um, a suggestion to that will help develop a particular pro, um, solve a particular problem. And meanwhile, you have been doing this in the kind of civic engagement, and you you now find yourself now going to public college. So, so how can we differentiate it? Just in a simple sentence for me to balance myself. Um, having said that, I would also um, make an appeal that the recording to this uh, meeting should please send to all the participants um, as soon as possible so that you can you know, you have you time to. Your meal. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, fine. I would send that. Thank, 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 thank you so much. Um, that's all. Thank you. Marvin, are you still here? Yes, I'm here with you. I'm here with you. All right. So, could you please help us with that question? Thank you very much for your question. The thin line between public policy and civic leadership is the fact that civic leadership is based with corporate social responsibility, civic society organizations, and non-governmental organizations. And in that case, you are doing it for the citizens. You are more for the people. It could be in the area of health. It could be for me, I use health because um, I use the fact that I want to health and what I'm about in the future that will help um, girls who have been molested and second my area of advocacy that that is where I'm venturing in and as much as other things I have done in the NGO sphere. That did not mean I was not a businessman of course you go through my profile you can also know the business that I run. It doesn't also mean I'm not a political person or a leader or an office holder. But the, for the purpose of this application I really needed to be tutored in the angle of that business leadership track, which was what I structured my application to. But for the public policy track, it means that you are working in public policy, policy that affect the good of people, which involves politics, which involves uh, a whole position, taking up responsibility. So definitely you will need to structure your uh, application in that regard. That means you should have been doing something. For example, um, Umi talked about it. She said, even though she had been doing the three years old, that's the civic leadership aspect. She needs a particular aspect of policy or public policy. So she structured her application in that regard. Based on what she was doing at the moment, it was also in that public policy sphere. So if you are doing something in the public policy sphere already, obviously you can apply in that regard. But if you take the application and you are not doing anything in the public policy sphere, you don't intend to do anything in the public policy sphere, and you know that this civic leadership sphere will favor you more in your application and give you higher chances of getting selected, why not do it? If you also check for it and you're like, I have already done a lot of things in civic leadership. For instance, Kemaka has already done a lot of things in civic leadership. She really needed help in her business and entrepreneurship aspect. So she tuned her, her application in that regard, highlighted the things she had done in that area, and she got selected in that field. It's just about picking the area that is most dear to you, that you have futuristic plans in, that you know that if you structure your application in that line, you have higher chances of getting selected. Trust me, the people that apply the most are always a civic leadership track because it covers corporate social responsibility, it covers NGO, it covers civil society or organization, it kind of covers everywhere. You now ask yourself, what will distinguish me? The work I have done so far, is it enough to make me selected in this field? If it's not enough to make me selected in this field, go to a one that, you know, not so many people apply number one and two, the work you've done can always highlight you. There's something I did on my Facebook which I'd like to share. I went to my um, area of um, the part of creating album, and then I put together all the links for everything I had done in hepatitis, everything I had done in HIV, and everything I had done in dementia, hypertension, communicable and non-communicable disease, everything I had done in sexual health, everything I had done in um, reaching out to children in secondary schools. I kind of put all of those links together in one post and saved it there. So it was those links I copied when um, I attached it in my 200 letters, uh, 200 words motivation. I kind of did it such a way that, okay, this is what I did. This is a link to it. So even someone reading my application can go there and see evidence that, okay, this person that claims to have done all of this, this is what she has really done. People, the, the Yali people want to do that. 
what you say you have done, you've actually done it. And this is where it's taking you to in the future. They don't just want you to get selected in a place that they know that ah, after this training, it ends there. No. They want it that after the training, you are still impacting in this area. And obviously, you know, business, uh, civic society, and public policy are kind of intertwined. I'm actually doing both business, civic society, and public policy. But to apply for the one that you have a wealth of experience in, and you know that this thing I'm applying for here, I have higher chances of getting it. So that's just. Thank you so much for sharing, Marvin. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you so much for staying put to this time. So if you have more questions, please, I dropped my number earlier on. Chat me up on WhatsApp or you send me a mail. You know, I sent us a mail. So you could just reply the mail with the questions. But I think WhatsApp would be better. Or mail, mail, <laughs> mail, actually. Yeah, I think I see the mail first. Okay, so thank you so much, Marvin, for that wonderful input. So I also want to use this opportunity to you know, talk about um, to invite us for Yali National Summit. George said something. Someone was asking about, I think he was, he was mentioning volunteering groups. Somebody told him to um, talk about, uh, mention some volunteering hubs. He knows. He talked about Jan. That's June Achievement Nigeria. He talked about Rotary Club. He talked about Yali. Just like I said initially, we have the Yali RLC. We have the Yali um, Network face-to-face, -face, and we have the MWF, that's the Mandela Washington Fellowship. So I would also urge us all to try as much as, much as possible to join any Yali network in your state, just like I am in Abuja. So apart from being a member of the Yali RLC, I'm also a member of Yali Network Abuja. Um, Fumi here is the Lagos State Coordinator of Yali Network. Marvin here is the Assistant Coordinator for Aqua Ibom State. For Yali Lagos. Lagos. Fumi, Yali Right. I'm right. Yali Network Lagos. Okay. So let's also try to join. Someone, a colleague of mine, dropped the link to um, become a volunteer or become one of the volunteers for the upcoming Yali National Summit. So we're currently planning a summit that will be coming up on September 29th and 30th. And I happen to be the deputy chair man for the summit so the link is here if you want to become a volunteer this is, a, this is an opportunity for you okay so you could even if you've not volunteered before you could start you know volunteering you could start um gauging your experiences for next okay marvin just said check out opportunities for africans.com for volunteering opportunities so just go online check out for hubs there's so many sites a friend of mine raquel daniel she has a site where volunteers just go like to look for opportunities and volunteer for organizations. So I want to say a very big thank you to each and every one of us here today. Thank you so much for this, for this, for, for staying put till now. Okay. Fumi sent a message there. You can go through, you can send her a mail to Yali Network Lagos for details on how to become a member. Okay. So if you want to share in Abuja, I want to become a member. You could also send me a mail or chat me up on WhatsApp. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you so much, George. I'm so grateful for staying till now. Thank you so much, Marvin. Thank you for me. God bless you all. Thank you, Bolu, for staying to this moment. Thank you, Kings. I know you're hiding. Thank you for staying to you till now. Adebayo, Dantala Sunday. Adebayo, Adetoke, um, CJ, I see you. Kenneth Festus, Helen, thank you so much, everyone. Dorcas, I see you. Peace, Ruth, Uche. Luce, you're welcome. Thank you so much for being here till tonight. So good night, everybody. I wish you all the best in your application. And in case you encounter any challenges, you can reach out to me via my mail or via WhatsApp. And if you get selected, please don't forget to tell me. Don't forget to send me a mail so that I'll, I'll share your good news. Okay? So good night, everyone. Please unmute yourself and tell me good night. Please, I want to hear our voices. Good night. Good night. Take care. Good night. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Good night, good night. Thank you. Nice to meet you all. It's very important. Bye. Refreshment is very important. Refreshment is very key.
The only way you can have a successful application is when you are fitting. When you are fitting very well, you can now write any application you want to write. Uh, ensure that you ask our candidates when you are hosting this next time. Thank you very much. I would add, I would add account details. <laughs> Oh it's yes, I WhatsApp you my phone. Uh, my phone. I'm only eating can I now. A, can I make a recommendation? Yes. Please, the next time you're hosting this, ensure that everybody have their PVC. Their PVC oh. is their gateway to join yeah. any any further. Uh, uh, yes. yes. Any training. Yes. Let's get our PVC, guys. It's important. Yes, and let them be obedient and use you useful. <laughs> Please. I'm telling you. Yes. Thank you so much for the recommendation. Well noted. Don't be, your, this, um, Kabid and Tala, I'll reach out to you Sunday. I'll personally reach out to you. Don't worry, I'll answer your question. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Guys. Oh, no, no, no. Tabu guy is single. Oh, no, no, no. no. Chamaka, send me money. Chamaka, send me your account. I'll send you. Hello, hello. Please check your inbox. I want to ask you something. Chamaka, I will be the last person to leave here. Please check it. I want for everybody to go. No way to. Because if you wait, yeah. then you could wait last, last. <laughs> As everybody go, child, pray fast. Ah, uh, please, yeah. Um, I think I will, I will message you, don't worry. Thank you, Ma. So, um, Mr. Bola, are you still here? Yes, yeah, we're here. We're, here. Here. we're waiting. We want to be the last. We don't want you to, <laughs> to say anything after so, this. So, uh, we're waiting. I'll message you by WhatsApp Bolo? and I... I'll need yes. your help, man. Thank you. Ma, please, I want to apply you. Can you help me apply? Please. Uh -huh. I'll send my details. Yes. <laughs> Bolu, check now. Check the, the message I sent to you. Kings, please yeah. look at the message. And uh, then okay. reply. Just chat me directly, please. Is it have you seen it? No, no, no. Okay, I've seen it. Um, I sent Bolu a okay. message. Please look at it. Yes, we've seen it now. How do you want, how do you want me to respond? The, the chat, block, chat, the chat directly. Chat me directly. You see, respond directly. Okay, okay. okay. You do that, yeah. Okay. So, Let me tell my candidate first. <laughs> yes, excuse me. Okay. Yeah, uh, I organize monthly webinar. Okay. Uh, from Yadi Sokoto. My name is Adida Paul. Oh, yeah, amazing. So I'm the program, I'm the program uh, manager, but here to go for mm -hmm. RLC, I pray I get this time around. Uh, okay. I organize monthly webinar, but one of the okay. challenges I have is the platform we are using, they don't have space for their, uh, on their Zoom accounts. I don't know if you can help me uh, see how I can achieve this goal of a platform, maybe sharing with your own platform or any other also. And uh, I will also need uh, more guidance. I've prepared my application, my input. Maybe I send it to you for you to help me cross check and it be a way to make better to supplement my application. Okay, did you see my did you see my email address? I dropped it earlier on. Did you see it? Yeah, yes, I saw it. If I'm on it now, I did the Fine. same one I used to just send me a message. Just send me a message via mail or WhatsApp, I'll respond, okay? Thank you, man. Thank you, man. Thank you. Uh, I just hold on. We're trying to okay. just check, check first. You get. Um, I'm not seeing. I'm not seeing. Just see. go see. Get remove everybody so I can tell you what to do. Okay. Remove yeah, everybody. Just leave the um. I don't know, Silas. Uh, let me let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Okay. Just wait. Okay, Kings, so I'm here now. Please, how do I do uh -huh. it? So go to settings. What do you see in settings? Okay. I'm seeing um, mute upon entry, play join, 
and leave sound. Meeting topic, show name when participants join, show non-video participants, show my video in gallery. Then under that recording sign, eh, I'm show seeing, my, I'm under show the my recording. Video. Huh? Show my video in gallery, please put it on. I should put it off. On, on. It's on. Okay, continue. Stop incoming video. Off, it's off. Okay, continue, just continue. Show name when participants join. Show non-video okay. participants. Show my video in gallery view on. Stop incoming video off. Mute upon entry on. Play join and leave sound off. Is that all you're seeing? Yes. Then that recording, I don't know if I should click stop or I should click pause. Because okay. I'm seeing the pause and the stop sign. Okay. Wait, so I'm coming. Wait, I'm coming. Hold on. Okay. Okay. Click the record button that appears along Stop. the button. Click the Is record. The one that has square. Yes, the record button. The red the record. record. Share you're using the computer, right? I'm using my phone. No, they took light. They took light. Yeah, so I'm using my uh, phone. So now I'm seeing that you know that pause, no pause, that two line that is pause and that square that is stop recording. Should I click that one? Or okay, should I just click, click on record. record. Yes, click on that record. Yes, on Android. That, that square. Yes. It will show it will be stop recording. That's what it's going to be, but then, yes, wait now. Uh to pause or stop the tap the recording icon on your screen. Mm -hmm. I've tapped it, that's what I'm telling you. So what is it showing you? It's showing me pause or stop. Okay. Click on stop. Okay, I should stop it. Yes. Pause first, then stop. Click stop. I should pause first. I'll be stop. No, click on stop. Click on it stop. stop because... now, yeah. Yes, click on stop. You receive an email when the cloud recording is ready. So let me stop. Okay. Stop. 